I want to welcome everyone to our hearing today uh, for Commerce, Manufacturing, and Trade Subcommittee. I think this is our, well, I think this is our last hearing of this congressional session, uh, assuming no emergency for next week. Uh, so uh, next year, uh, Mr. Burgess, as I understand, uh, is going to take over the gavel for this subcommittee and so he uh, even though he is not currently a member of the subcommittee is joining us today uh, to just uh, kind of get a feel for the importance of this subcommittee and uh, certainly the importance of this hearing today so uh, I the title of this hearing is Takata airbag ruptures and recalls Safety recalls are often marked by tragedy. That's what brings it to our attention. But they are even more troubling when they, uh, the very equipment being recalled is intended to save lives. Now this morning we'll begin piecing together the history of a safety defect that became known only by what appears to us as fits and starts and seemingly has several potential causes. The first known rupture occurred in 2004 in Alabama. Three more ruptures in 2007 led Takata to identify a bad stamp press at a manufacturing facility in Moses Lake, Washington. In 2008, Honda recalled 3,940 cars in the U.S. However, two more airbags ruptured in May and June of 2009, one of which killed the driver. At that point, it appears that Takata believed the airbag inflators were being improperly exposed to moisture during the production process. However, around the same time, Takata confirmed that a stamp press was to blame for the at-risk airbags. In early 2011, uncertainty about the cause of the continuing ruptures led to another recall and previous recalls were expanded in late 2012 upon the discovery that Takata's production records were in disarray. NHTSA, Takata, and car manufacturers all indicate that the vehicles with faulty airbags tied to manufacturing or storage issues have been recalled. And yet, several more ruptures subsequently occurred in southern states. This led manufacturers in NHTSA to believe that the prolonged exposure to high absolute humidity levels was a major contributing factor. However, NHTSA recently demanded that manufacturers broaden the current recalls in southern states to the national level. NHTSA believes that the recent incidents in California and North Carolina indicate the possibility of ruptures in areas with lower absolute humidity. I understand Takata disagrees with NHTSA's assessment, and I look forward to learning more about that. Uh, while the OEMs that are before us today have all stated publicly that they are willing to do a national uh, recall. Now, there are several questions here to address. For example, are the current testing met uh, methods adequate? How much testing is enough to determine a cause and how quickly it's being carried out? What is the appropriate level of coordination between NHTSA automakers and their suppliers? What metrics should be used to determine whether a recall is necessary? There are also questions about the supply of replacement parts and whether those replacement parts are truly safer than the parts being recalled. Our highway safety depends on the vigilance of manufacturers as well as NHTSA. Sometimes the regulator is in the best position to defend uh, the defect, and sometimes it's the manufacturer. The time has come to bring the facts together and make sure that the unsafe airbag inflators are off the market. Consumers can get their faulty parts replaced, and the future recalls are handled better. The safety of American drivers depend on our collective success. So I thank the witnesses for being here today and help achieve these goals and put a stop to this deadly problem. And there's one minute left of mine. Um, Marsha, would you like to claim that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Yield Chairman. To you. 
Thank you. And I, I thank our witnesses also for being here. And as the chairman said, 2004 is the first time we knew of this issue. <clears throat> it was when the first inflator exploded. And then we go through the process of looking at the propellant change and finding out when the change was made, made going to ammonium nitrate in 01. Now, we do hope that this hearing is going to give us an opportunity to talk with you about the decision-making process. Who was involved in that? Why they made the decisions that they did? Um, we'll drill down on that. We are very disappointed in Takata uh, refusing to work with NHTSA on the deadline for a national recall of the driver's side airbags. It expired last night. Uh, we will want to address that with you. We welcome our witnesses, and I am finishing right on time, Mr. Chairman. Back to well you. Done. Uh, now the chair recognizes the ranking member, the gentlelady from Illinois, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for holding this important hearing today. Before I turn to today's business, I'd like to thank ranking member Waxman for his decade of leadership and his service as chairman and ranking member of this committee. He will leave an indelible legacy of achievement when he retires at the end of this year. And I am so proud to have learned from and worked with him on so many issues of great importance to the American people. And Mr. Chairman, I'd also like to recognize you for your eight terms in the House representing the people of Nebraska. And I've enjoyed working with you during your chairmanship of the subcommittee over the past two years. I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. I'm deeply saddened that we're here again today to discuss preventable deaths, but I'm determined to understand exactly what happened and to respond in a way that improves driver and passenger safety. In 2004, a driver in Alabama was killed by shrapnel ejected from a Takata airbag. Four years later, the company issued the first recall to address airbag ruptures, a recall that expanded over the next five years. Earlier this year, a new regional recall was initiated to find the root cause of similar ruptures. And last week, NHTSA asked Takata to order a national recall. And yesterday, the company rejected NHTSA's request. Media reports suggest that Takata and Honda knew about the serious risks its airbags posed to drivers and passengers as early as 10 years ago. If prompt action had been taken to investigate the airbag ruptures and truly address the cause, we wouldn't be here today. Because Takata refused NHTSA's request for a recall, auto manufacturers, whose customers are driving vehicles equipped with airbags that could be deadly, now have to determine whether they will recall the airbags on their own while the mandatory recall process moves forward. I've received letters from constituents who are literally afraid to drive their cars, and this is unacceptable. I want to know why Takata has been so slow and ineffective to respond in responding to this deadly defect and why it believes a national recall is not warranted. I want to know what commitments Takata and the auto companies represented here today plan to make in the immediate future to protect their customers. I want to know what more NHTSA needs to uh, do in order to prevent problems like this from continuing to repeat themselves in the future. And I want to know, since the cause of the airbag ruptures is still not certain, whether replacement of these potentially dangerous airbags with very similar products actually eliminates the risk of airbag explosions in the future. So I look forward to our witness answer, witnesses' answers to these questions and more. The incredibly slow response to this problem is just the latest reminder that we need stronger laws to protect drivers and passengers and to hold manufacturers accountable for the cars they sell. Earlier this year, I introduced H.R. 5654, the Vehicle Safety Information Act, legislation to improve auto safety and the efficacy of, uh, and efficiency of recalls. That bill would expand and clarify the information manufacturers must provide NHTSA about defects and fatal incidents, increase information about auto defects that NHTSA must share with the public, increase financial penalties and remove the statutory maximum penalty for manufacturers that violate NHTSA reporting requirements, provide an imminent hazard authority so that NHTSA can expedite recalls of potentially deadly cars, limit the resale of cars with a serious defect unless the problem has been fixed 
or the buyer has been notified, and end regional recalls. I urge the chairman to bring this bill up for consideration in the subcommittee or to ask House leadership to put it on the suspension calendar without delay. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. Chair now recognizes full committee chair, Mr. Upton. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I uh, appreciate your leadership the last number of years, and we also will miss Mr. Waxman, and uh, I think we'll have a, at some point a, a formal uh, recognition of, of your, both of your service. So I'm from the auto state. I'm sorry to say that it has been a bad year for auto safety. The latest danger for drivers, malfunctioning airbags that, in fact, can shoot shrapnel through the air and make a bad accident even worse. Drivers are being told that their vehicle is subject to a recall, but there are not enough parts to fix it, and if they do get a replacement, that airbag may be subject to the same safety failure in the future because we still don't know if the root problem has been addressed. There are still lots of questions surrounding these airbag defects and recalls, and today we all want some answers. The American people deserve to have confidence that the cars that they drive are safe and that the industry and the government are doing everything that they can do to improve safety. The first question that has to be determined is whether or not it's a design flaw for the airbag or is it a manufacturing issue? Until that question is answered, you're not going to be able to resolve the issue. Unfortunately, deadly auto defects and massive recalls are not new subjects for this committee. I've listened to and led multiple recall hearings ranging from the Ford Firestone crisis to the Toyota floor mat problem, obviously to the GM ignition switch debacle earlier this year. And over a decade ago, I authored the Bipartisan Tread Act so that we could help catch and then fix defects sooner and avoid the kind of disaster that we're facing today. Yet here we are again. Tread Act was very simple requiring manufacturers to report the information needed to help NHTSA quickly identify vehicle defects and remove flawed cars from the road right away. Our goal was to prevent injuries and save lives, but we need industry and NHTSA to do their part. Cars are safer today, but not because a company hires lawyers and consultants to avoid reporting safety incidents. I'm going to ask some tough questions uh, regarding what we've read and heard about Honda manipulating the system to, uh, to report as little as possible. Companies need to know that there isn't anything safe about shorting safety. We need more automakers to make safety a priority and institute safety incentives. In the case of GM, they acknowledged their safety failure. Their CEO volunteered to testify, and they hired a new safety officer to implement company-wide culture changes. I'd like to see that same level of urgency, that same admission of mistakes, and that same commitment to do better today. Complex safety technology can lead to complex problems, and the Takata airbag issues are indeed complex. There were manufacturing issues and there were handling issues, and as soon as one problem was identified, it seemed like another sprang up, sort of like guacamole. And now we're waiting to find out if humidity is the issue or if there are other manufacturing concerns. In the meantime, testing is slow, and we are short on replacement parts. What is worse, no one can say for sure that the replacement parts are any safer than the originals. We may be right back here after the replacement parts have reached their humidity half-life. But complexity is not an excuse for incompetence. We need to make sure that companies and regulators can, can, can keep pace with innovation, we need a regulatory agency that breeds confidence and offers solutions, not one that is often too, uh, part of the problem. To our witnesses, I pose this question. What should I say to the mom in Michigan who asks me if she and her family are safe behind the wheel? Families across the country expect the safety devices in their vehicles to work. They expect them to provide life-saving protection that they can count on in the event of an accident. And they expect that problems from earlier models be reported and fixed. And they expect to be able to get our defect repaired when they find out about it. But sadly, I don't think I can give that assurance right now. One thing is for sure, we've got a lot of issues to resolve. I want to again thank Chairman Terry for calling this hearing to start the process. I want to thank him from the bottom of my heart for his service as a leader of this sub subcommittee 
and wish him well in the future and uh, yield back my time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's much appreciated. Now it's time to introduce our panel. Mr. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. Getting ahead of myself. <laughs> uh, Gentleman from California is recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Neither you nor I have left the committee yet, <laughs> which we will do at the end of this year. And I thank our, our colleague, Ms. Schakowsky, for her kind words. Uh, here's what we know so far about the Takata airbag recalls. We know that there's been a series of airbag recalls affecting millions of vehicles dating back to 2008, and we know that at least five people are dead and dozens have been injured by these defective airbags. There are questions about the Takata airbags that remain unanswered. We do not know exactly what Takata and auto manufacturers knew about these defective airbags and when they knew it. We do not know, and it appears that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Takata, and the auto manufacturers do not know either the root cause of all these exploding airbags. So we have questions about whether the replacement airbag inflators are safe. New documents provided to the committee reveal new questions. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, known as NHTSA, recently requested a national recall of all defective airbags on the driver's side of the car, but has limited its action to regional recalls of passenger side airbags. But data we, we, we've received is raising new questions about the safety of passenger side airbags and the scope of recalls. Takata has tested over 2,500 driver and passenger side airbags for ruptures. None of the driver's side airbags ruptured in these tests. But Takata has observed over 60 passenger side airbag ruptures. Given these testing results, we need to understand why NHTSA has requested a broader recall for driver's side airbags, but has not made the same request for passenger side airbags. Mr. Chairman, I have some uh, documents that I've referred to showing these test results, and I would ask unanimous consent to put them in the hearing record. Without objection? We need order. to find answers to these questions, and I hope the committee will continue its investigation even after the time you and I, Mr. Chairman, will be gone. But we know enough now to begin our legislative work. Mr. Chairman, last April I joined Representative Schakowsky to introduce H.R. 4364, the Motor Vehicle Safety Act of 2014. There are many important provisions in this legislation that would address problems that the committee found in our investigations of Takata's exploding airbags and the GM ignition switch failure. In both cases, auto manufacturers and auto parts manufacturers failed to provide key information to the federal agency, NHTSA, in a timely fashion. And we learned last week of another major auto safety failure. For over a decade, Honda failed to report to the NHTSA more than 1,700 claims of injuries or deaths caused by accidents in its vehicles. Our legislation improves the early warning reporting system by making more reported information public and ensuring that NHTSA receives significantly more information from manufacturers on any fatal incident involving a safety defect. Additional data and greater transparency will help NHTSA identify deadly safety defects sooner. In both the GM and Takata cases, NHTSA has been criticized for failing to recognize and act quickly enough as evidence mounted of deadly auto defects. Our bill provides more resources to give them the additional enforcement authority and increases the fines for manufacturers uh, that violate safety vehicle, vehicle safety laws. Mr. Chairman, uh, today we'll learn of other needed fixes to the current system. I think our legislation is a good place to start. While I have a very short time left, I'd like to yielded to the gentleman for, uh, for, from Vermont, uh, the balance uh, of my time. No, thank you very much. The two concerns I have that I hope are addressed in this is, one, public safety. Obviously, automobiles uh, are extremely important but can be dangerous with the defect. And number two, uh, 
public confidence. When a serious incident happens uh, that threatens a life, causes the life, uh, it creates an immense amount of public insecurity among the driving public. And obviously, in my view, the burden has to be on the manufacturer uh, in our governmental agencies to take the appropriate steps to revive and restore public confidence. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now it's the appropriate time to introduce the panel. I'll introduce the panel as a whole, and then we'll start uh, with Takata as the first speaking witness. So today, our first panel uh, representing Takata is Hiroshi Shimaz, uh, Shimizu, Shimizu, yeah. sorry, yeah. Uh, from Honda, Rick Shostak, from BMW, Chris Westbrook, uh, from Toyota, Abbas Sadat. Uh, appreciate all of you being here. Uh, we will go uh, from right, um, my left, your right, uh, and start with Mr. Shimizu. Uh, but before I ask you to start, I uh, want to recognize that you're appearing uh, with a translator because English is not Mr. Shimizu's first language and while the committee will allow Mr. Shimizu to confer with the translator for the purpose of clarification, he will be required to answer the committee's question in his own voice and in English. Uh, we've already discussed that and I appreciate uh, your acceptance of that. So, uh, Mr. Shimizu, you are now recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Terry and Ranking Member Sarkovsky and distinguished members of the subcommittee, I'm honored to be here on behalf of Takata Corporation. Mr. Chairman, Takata is dedicated to making products that save lives. Millions of Takata airbags have inflated properly, preventing thousands of deaths and avoiding serious injuries in hundreds of thousands of accidents around the world. But any failure of even one airbag to perform as designed in an automobile accident is incompatible with Takata's mission. All of us at Takata know that the airbag inflator ruptures that have been the subject of recent recalls involve serious issues of public safety. We are deeply sorry about each case where uh, Takata's airbag has not performed as designed and the driver or passenger has suffered personal injuries or death. Takata is working closely with the automakers and NHTSA to support the ongoing recalls and the field actions and to address the potential for inflator rupturing. We are increasing our production of quality replacement kits to fulfill the automaker's orders. We are also devoting extensive efforts and attention to answering requests for information about these matters from NHTSA and other investigators. We are committed to bring fully trans uh, being fully transparent with the government. Our one important function of the legal field action is to retrieve inflators for testing and analysis. In the past several months, we have tested thousands of returned inflators in our Michigan facilities, and we are increasing our testing capacity. We regularly share all of these test results with the, with the automakers and NHTSA. Based on the data currently available and our best engineering judgment, Takara continues to believe that the public safety is best served if the area of high absolute humidity remains a priority for the replacement of suspect inflators. But make no mistake, we will take all actions necessary to advance the goal of safety for the driving public, including working to produce additional replacement units to support any further recalls that may be announced by automakers. Takara is also prepared to collaborate where feasible with other inflator producers 
to create additional production capacity for replacement units over the long term. We are confident that, that the inflators we are producing today are safe because we have confidence in the integrity of our engineering and our current manufacturing processes here in the United States and across the world. We believe that properly manufactured and installed, the inflators we are producing today <coughs> will work as designed to save lives for the expected life of the automobiles. To provide added quality assurance for the public and the automakers, Takata is forming an independent quality assurance panel to audit and prepare an independent report regarding our current manufacturing processes for the production of safe inflators, including inflator propellant. Upon completion, the panel's report will be made public. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, gentlemen from Honda, Mr. Rikshashek, you are recognized for your five minutes. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Schakowsky, and members of the subcommittee, thank you for this opportunity to testify. My name is Rick Shostak. I'm Executive Vice President with Honda North America. I want to begin by expressing our deepest sympathies to those individuals and families who have been affected by these tragic incidents. We offer our sincere apologies to the families of those who have died, who have been injured, or who have been in any way inconvenienced due to the defects in the Takata airbags in our vehicles. Airbags save thousands of lives each year, but we recognize that even one customer who is injured or loses their life when an airbag does not perform as intended is one too many, and it is completely unacceptable. On November 17th, NHTSA called for a nationwide recall of the driver airbag inflators that have been included in the Regional Safety Improvement Campaign undertaken in four states and territories with consistently high absolute humidity. We understand that Takata has not identified or acknowledged any defect of the driver airbag inflators. And thus far, Takata has not announced plans to follow NHTSA's request for a national recall. We want to inform you that Honda is going to expand our existing regional safety improvement campaign on affected driver airbag inflators to a national campaign. Why are we doing this? Because our customers have concerns and we want to address them. We believe this expansion and acceleration of current action, we believe there will be a part shortage that may occur despite Takata's efforts to increase the supply of inflators. To further increase the part supply, we have been in discussions with Takata and two other suppliers, Autoleave and Dysel, about expanding the production of replacement inflators. These talks have been encouraging and we believe will ultimately reduce the duration of any shortage. However, until those parts are available, we will continue to discuss with NHTSA and Takata how to best manage the supply issue. Based on the information from them, we believe it is best to prioritize the replacement of driver airbag inflators in what are considered to be the highest risk areas in the country. In addition, Honda believes that all stakeholders would benefit from expert third-party testing of Takata airbag inflators that was announced yesterday as an industry-wide program. By coming together as an industry and sharing information and testing, and with Takata's continued cooperation, we believe we can achieve greater results more quickly. Let me briefly summarize how we got to this point. Between 2008 to 2014, Honda has conducted seven national recalls related to specific Takata manufacturing defects. Since June of 2014, 
Honda, along with other automakers, has been supporting NHTSA's request to conduct regional safety improvement campaigns in states and territories with high absolute humidity. We understand the urgency of the current situation, and we have been taking proactive steps to address the needs of our customers. In addition to the required first-class mail notification, we have made hundreds of thousands of phone calls, used overnight mail delivery, and routinely sent letters in both English and Spanish. We have also hired a search firm to help us locate hard-to-find customers in some circumstances. And importantly, for customers whose vehicles cannot be immediately repaired, Honda has instructed our dealers to provide loaner, or rental cars at no cost to the customer. To summarize, we are going to expand the safety improvement campaign on affected driver bag and flighters nationwide, prioritizing the high-risk areas. We are working with multiple suppliers to increase parts availability, and we are participating in the joint industry research effort. Our entire company is operating with the greatest energy and focus to quickly address our customers' needs and concerns. In the days ahead, with every action of our company, we are dedicating ourselves to honor the relationship we have with our customers. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Mr. Westbrook, you are now recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Terry, Ranking Member Schakowsky, and members of the subcommittee. Start again. Thank you, Here. Chairman Terry, Ranking Member Schakowsky, and members of the subcommittee for your invitation to participate in today's hearing. My name is Craig Westbrook, Vice President of BMW of North America. I'm here on behalf of our company, representing the 70,000 people who have jobs provided and supported by the BMW Group in the United States. In total, the BMW Group's presence is represented in 48 states. This includes our North American headquarters in New Jersey, <coughs> our financial services in Ohio, and our manufacturing facility in Spartanburg, South Carolina, just to name a few locations. In fact, BMW Group's South Carolina production site is the largest single exporter of ve vehicles by value in the United States of America. The BMW Group has been to the United States, in the United States for nearly four decades. We have worked hard to become part of the fabric of the communities in which we are present. Central to our investments in and commitment to the United States has been a focus on earning our reputation for delivering on our word and building trust with customers and communities alike. Vehicle safety is fundamental to the BMW Group. Because of this, I highly appreciate the opportunity to appear today before this subcommittee. I will share a brief timeline of BMW North America's activities related to Takata airbag recalls. In May of 2013, after Takata informed BMW North America of production issues with certain inflators, we initiated a voluntary national safety recall. This involved the passenger front airbag on approximately 42,000 model year 2000 to 2003 BMW vehicles. In May of 2014, NHTSA met with Takata to discuss consumer reported issues with certain passenger and driver airbag inflators. In mid-June, after follow-up calls with Takata, NHTSA opened a preliminary evaluation in an unprecedented approach to determine the root cause and the potential safety risk, NHTSA held a conference call with all affected automakers. During this call, automakers were asked for their support to conduct a voluntary parts collection campaign in specific high humidity regions. BMW of North America promptly agreed to participate in this campaign. In July of 2014, out of an abundance of caution, BMW of North America expanded its voluntary campaign and previous 2013 recall of passenger front airbags. On July 15, 2014, BMW North America notified NHTSA of the voluntary nationwide recall of an additional 574,000 vehicles. The next day, July 16, 2014, BMW dealers were notified of the recall after notification to NHTSA. Standard practice for notifying customers involves an auto company preparing a draft customer notification letter for NHTSA's review. In late August, NHTSA approved our letter. BMW of North America mailed notification letters to our customers in mid-September using first-class mail as required by NHTSA regulation. 
Another way customers are informed of recalls is at our dealerships. When a customer visits a dealership, the service advisor at every BMW dealer conducts a vehicle inquiry for outstanding recalls. Once the VIN is identified, the service advisor cross-references the VIN against our recall database. If applicable, customers are informed that their vehicle is subject to a recall. Repairs are either taken care of on the spot or an appointment is scheduled as soon as possible. We have also made the recall information available on our consumer site, bmwusa.com. Additionally, the information is also available on the NHTSA site, www.safercar.gov. On either site, customers have the ability to access recall information just by entering their VIN. We even issued a press release regarding the Takata airbag recall for BMW. In total, this voluntary nationwide recall affects approximately 616,000 model year 2000 to 2006 3 Series vehicles. NHTSA estimates over 7.8 million vehicles industry-wide are currently affected by the Takata airbag recall and parts collection campaign in the United States. BMW of North America is also currently conducting a voluntary regional parts collection campaign in certain states. This campaign affects the driver's front airbag on approximately 11,600 model year 2004 to model year 2006 BMW 3 Series vehicles. We are significantly increasing our loaner fleet to provide any BMW customer who needs a loaner, rental vehicle, or alternative transportation of the customer's wish. I can assure the subcommittee that BMW of North America will continue working with NHTSA and Takata on these issues. We will remain vigilant in identifying safety issues and proactive in addressing them. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. Now, Mr. Sadat, you are recognized for your five minutes. Chairman Terry, Ranking Member Schakowsky, I'm a member of the committee. Thank you for inviting me here today. My name is Abbas Sadat, and I'm the Regional Product Safety Executive and a Vice President at Toyota North America. I am a senior executive in the United States responsible for Toyota's interaction with NHTSA and currently have oversight responsibility for field action in the U.S. regarding the Takata airbag inflator recalls. I am an engineer by training and function. First, Toyota shares your goals of helping those affected by these recalls and keeping them safe. We are committed to resolve this issue for our customers as quickly, conveniently, and safely as possible. We believe the actions we have taken reflect this commitment. From the beginning, Toyota has responded to defect information from Takata, coordinated with NHTSA, and supported Takata and NHTSA in their ongoing investigation. In April of 2013, Toyota launched a nationwide recall for front passenger airbag inflators. This recall is still in effect today. In June of this year, we expanded uh, the remedy for this recall to replace all affected Takata inflators. Also in June, in response to NHTSA's request <coughs> to the industry, we were among the first automakers to recover in airbag inflators for testing by Takata. In October, Takata provided testing data to Toyota and NHTSA that suggested the safety risk was highest in the area of consistently high absolute humidity. In response, we intensified our effort to reach customers in those humid areas, which was publicized nationwide. Throughout these recalls, we have worked to alert customers and get them the information they need. Beyond our initial national outreach, we have mailed more than 300,000 notification letters to known owners in a designated humid region. We also have made it easier for customers to find recall information on Toyota's website. In addition, we have started a secondary customer outreach program in humid areas that include telephone calls, email, and direct mail. And we are staffing our call centers to handle any increase in Takata-related inquiries. At the same time, we are working to get replacement parts to Toyota dealers, and this effort is going well in humid regions. If parts are unavailable, we have empowered dealers to meet our customers' needs and minimize their inconvenience. For example, in humid area, dealers can disable the front passenger airbag and affix a prominent glove box label that warns against using that seat until a replacement inflator is installed. 
Dealers are also making loaner vehicles available and towing affected vehicles for customers if necessary. To this point, the faster we get replacement parts, the faster we can fix our customers' vehicles. Takata estimates that its supply will increase significantly starting this month. Like you, we want additional assurances about integrity and quality of Takata's manufacturing processes, particularly in the light of previous experiences. For instance, in 2010, Toyota had to recall certain Takata inflator in Japan to address a different manufacturing problem not involving U.S. vehicles. In terms of testing, we have conducted and continue to conduct some testing on Takata inflators, and we have also inspected Takata production facilities. Additionally, we have retained an independent engineering firm to evaluate affected Takata inflators and replacement parts. Separately, Toyota is inviting all affected automakers to participate in a joint industry-wide initiative to conduct independent testing of Takata airbag inflators. Toyota will further address the issue of testing in our response to NHTSA's recent general order and ongoing communications with the agency. Again, our nationwide recall remains in effect, and we plan to replace all involved inflators as parts become available. In closing, Toyota is taking this issue very seriously. We will continue to respond promptly to new development and do what's best for our customers. Thank you, and I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you, Mr. Sadat. At this time, we are now uh, to the question and answer period, and I have the opportunity to ask the first questions. Uh, Mr. Shimizu? Yes. Uh, following NHTSA's June, I think it was 19th, uh, 2014 request to Takata and 10 vehicle manufacturers to participate in a regional field action. How many passengers side and driver side airbag inflators have been tested to this date? So June 14th to today. To my knowledge, uh, up to today, uh, we complete the test uh, around 4,000 pieces. Now, is that uh, the 4,000 uh, tests, are they evenly divided between passenger and driver side? It's uh, uh, most of the part is the passenger side, and uh, uh, I think for driver side, uh, tested uh, quantity is about, uh, I believe, f around 400. 400? Yeah, 400. So uh, 3,600 of the tests were on the passenger side? Yes. So out of the 3,600 uh, on the passenger side airbags, uh, how many ruptures have occurred? It's, uh, uh, I don't have an uh, accurate number, but I believe around uh, a little bit less than 60. Less than 60, okay. Uh, how about on the driver's side of the 400 that was tested? Uh, zero at this moment. Zero. How many uh, tests are you doing uh, currently, per day? Okay. Uh, per, uh, currently, we are testing about uh, 100 uh, inflators per day. 100 what per day? 100 uh, pieces per day. Test pieces. Are those all passenger or again is it uh, ra both? It's uh, sometimes only passenger side, uh, sometimes uh, only driver side or mix. It mm -hmm. depends on uh, fit, what kind of inflator we collected from the region. Very good. Then uh, with uh, your continued uh, stance on opposing a national recall, uh, what about Takata's test results leads you to believe that a national recall of all driver's side airbags is not needed or appropriate? Uh, based on the data we are collecting uh, from the inflator uh, from region and also outside regions, the data still uh, support that we uh, should remain focused on the region with high temperature and the high humidity. Okay. 
Now, the crashes in California and North Carolina led NHTSA to believe that uh, the Takata airbag inflators pose a risk outside of the states with high absolute humidity. So why do you disagree with NHTSA's conclusion here? Uh, first, uh, let me uh, restate uh, what I uh, mentioned in the opening statement. It's, uh, uh, we are not opposing uh, the, the NHTSA direction. It's, uh, we will commit to take any action uh, necessary to advance the goal of safety uh, for the driving public. That uh, also includes the work to produce, uh, working to produce the additional uh, replacement kits to support uh, the further recall that may be announced by automakers. So once automakers uh, uh, decide to expand or change the range of the recalls, we'll support it. And, uh, Regarding your question about California event and the uh, North Carolina event, uh, California event is uh, that vehicles uh, uh, is uh, covered by current regional recall, but uh, also I want to uh, explain that it's, uh, uh, we do some uh, investigation about that event, but it's not completed yet and it's still under investigation. And regarding the event in North Carolina, uh, at this time uh, we had no chance to. Uh, uh, check the vehicles and the actual materials. We only have the uh, production uh, serial number information and the pictures. So we will do the inspect the actual vehicles later together with NHTSA and uh, automakers and Takara. Very good. Well, I only have 28 seconds left, so I'll yield back my time and recognize the ranking member uh, from Illinois for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Shimizu, am I saying it correctly? Yes. Okay. Uh, in the letter Takata sent to NHTSA yesterday, the company rejected a national recall. Your director of product safety wrote that, quote, under the NHTSA statute, only manufacturers of motor vehicles and replacement equipment are required to decide in good faith whether their products contain a safety-related defect, and if so, to conduct a recall, unquote. And, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to submit this letter for the record. Without objection, so order. Mr. Shimizu, let me ask you, do you agree with the conclusions in the letter sent by your company yesterday? Yes, from this woman. So, Mr. Shimizu, do you agree that Takata is not required to decide in good faith whether your products contain a safety-related defect? Uh, Congresswoman, I agree with that statement. It's uh, based on the data we have. Uh, doesn't support to change from regional recall to national recall at this moment. So are you telling us that your company has no legal responsibility to determine if airbags are defective and to recall them? Uh, if it's, uh, def uh, our products are uh, uh, defective and uh, is su supported by uh, scientific uh, uh, data, uh, we are responsible for that. So you believe that you are responsible for that if they are found to be defective, but it's really up to you to decide that. Uh, yes, we, we need uh, extensive uh, research of the uh, products uh, involved in the incident or uh, whatever. So uh, once we decide, yes, uh, we determine that defective, yes, it's uh, our responsibility. Um, so moving forward, Takata will be producing millions of replacement airbags. Are the replacement airbags that you're having installed as a result of the recall safe? Yes, uh, is it true? it's true that we have issued in the past. And uh, uh, we identified the root cause and uh, addressed the all issues we had in the past and uh, take care of this. And uh, uh, currently, our products, is, uh, uh, including replacement kits, we are produ uh, producing from well-controlled uh, uh, manuf manufacturing processes and uh, uh, should uh, perform as designed, and I consider it safe. So you believe that um, you have, in fact, discovered the root cause of the ruptures? Excuse me. Uh, ha ha are you sure that and certain that you have discovered, Takata has discovered the root cause of the airbag ruptures? Yes, it's, uh, uh, we identified root cause of the uh, issues uh, uh, of the products we did the recall in the past. 
However, uh, we still continue the investigation uh, for the uh, incident to happen in an uh, area with high humidity and high temperature. So uh, we need to continue to investigate uh, these uh, uh, inflators collected from these regions. So are you saying that it is only in high humidity areas that this is a problem, that that is the root cause? Uh, we consider its uh, a main contribution to the problem is a high temperature and uh, high humidity, absolute humidity, together with uh, uh, age of the uh, products and uh, probably maybe combination with uh, manufacturing issues. That's why we're collecting inflator from these regions uh, with support uh, uh, from automakers and NHTSA and then continue to uh, 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 analyze these oh, inflators. Interesting. So who is the highest ranking Takata official that has actually signed off on production of the airbags that are now being recalled? The ones that are defect, the ones that ha are being recalled. Who's the highest ranking official that has actually signed off on that? Uh, it's any uh, quality related issues and uh, uh, statement from a company I usually sign. You signed it, yeah. okay. Um, and who is the highest ranking Takata official with oversight over the production approval process? Uh, production approved is uh, usually signed by head of operation and also uh, quality assurance, which means uh, I signed and I approve. Okay. And, and let me just ask each, each of the uh, manufacturers. Oh, and one more question for you, Mr. Shimi. So have any of these individuals, including yourself, been held accountable for these decisions? Excuse me, can I ask my interpreter? Yes. Have there been consequences? Uh, we are more focused on the, uh, collecting the problems, <laughs> and uh, 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 we are not addressing that area yet. Okay. But let me quickly, could I ask just uh, yes or no? Are Toyota, Honda, and BMW cars on the road right now nationally, both for drivers and passengers with Takata airbags safe. The real question is, would you tell your children and spouses there is no danger of this type of rupture, so keep on driving? Mr. Shostak, and then. Uh, Congresswoman, we want our customers to be safe and to feel safe in our cars. As you've heard, there are national recalls in, uh, in effect uh, what we want our customers to do is first understand whether their car is subject to a recall. They can do that either by checking our website, by calling us, or by visiting their local dealer and, and finding out if they're, su if they're subject to a recall. If they are, we want that car. We want to replace that part. If they are not subject to a recall, we believe they're safe in those cars. Okay. Mr. West uh, Westbrook? Yes. Mr. S Sadat? Uh, please keep in mind, uh, in, for Toyota vehicles, the uh, problematic inflators are all on passenger side, not driver's side. Uh, they just want to make that clear for Toyota vehicles. But in terms of... How uh, do you know that? All the deaths were on the driver's side. Uh, all the deaths, not in necessarily in Toyota, but all the deaths... No, no, I understand. Jay, I the gentle lady's right. time has right. expired. Okay. Chair now recognizes the full committee chair, Mr. Upton. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to go back to my opening statement where I, this, this committee has been very involved in auto safety, uh, rightly so, for a lot of years. And I can remember uh, rolling a, a flawed tire down this very dais uh, about 10 years ago, uh, really seeking action, and we did it. We worked at the end of the session, we significantly raised the fines, and we added criminal sanctions for violations, jail. It was tough to get through, but we got it done. And I want to say it was, uh, it was certainly bipartisan, and it was uh, pretty close to unanimous in terms of what we did. And what that Tread Act did was really forcing the manufacturers to share details with the regulator to make sure that consumers, us, got the information, and felt safety behind the wheel. Now, there's a report that came out this morning. I've not read it, just uh, literally within the last uh, half hour or so. But it says uh, Reuters, Reuters is reporting today that Takata 
ran an investigation into an airbag inflator that ruptured in a BMW as early as 2003, and that additional testing for airbag inflator defects was done in 2004, 10 years ago. That was the time when we were passing the Tread Act. Both of these revelations would indicate that Takata was investigating this hazard well before it has been previously disclosed. Can you comment, Mr. Shimizu, on the 2003 and 2004 investigations? Are they related to the current recall? Congressman, is, uh, my answer is no. You can use the mic if you... Excuse me, can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, my answer is no. Is uh, regarding the BMW incident in 2003, I, to my knowledge, it's, it's happened uh, in Europe, I believe Switzerland, and uh, uh, that the cause of the problem is not uh, inflator uh, uh, propellant uh, uh, issues we are talking about right now. Uh, that was uh, manufacturing issues uh, that caused that problem. So it's not the uh, same as the problems we are uh, discussing right now. So they're not related, is what you're saying? Uh, not related to the current issues. So do you know whether the issue today is manufacturing related or is it a design flaw in the, in the inflator itself? Do you know that an the answer to that question? Uh, yes or no? <laughs> in my knowledge, is a current issues is a, a most likely manufacturing related. Not designed it either. It is. It is not manufacturer related. It is manufacturer. It is manufacturer. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Shostak. In 2011, a Honda associate recognized an issue related to the recording of a verbal date code in the legal file management system that could have affected the accuracy of the early warning report. And additionally, in 2012, NHTSA made Honda aware that it was under-reporting claims. Why didn't Honda follow up with the issue in 2011, and why didn't Honda take conclusive action in 2012? Chairman Upton, thank you very much for that question. And we, I understand your involvement in the establishment of the Tread Act more than 10 years ago, and I can understand the disappointment that you feel by the shortcomings that have been evidenced by our company and I want to explain to you what happened. Uh, the problem that we had with underreporting in the Tread Act is a systematic problem that began at the outset of the Tread Act. As you know, it went into effect in 2003. Our staff at the time did not properly uh, uh, program com computers and set up systems that would accurately let data flow and feed into Tread reports. It is difficult for me to say, sir, but that setup continued unchecked until 2011, 2012. You are right that an internal Honda associate did mention uh, a concern as well as a discussion with NHTSA. Uh, they asked about the uh, uh, omission of certain incidents in our tread reporting. We did look into that, sir, in early 2012. We did not look into it effectively. We found one of what eventually we came to know would be three problems. We found one problem and took substantial action to address that one problem, but, sir, it did not uh, complete our compliance requirements. Can I ask just the unanimous consent for an additional uh, minute just to say, so what was... Without what, objection. And, and we're going to be asking NHTSA, who's following, what, what was NHTSA's response? when You did correct it with NHTSA, is that not right? I mean, you did fess up, in essence, to NHTSA, right? In, in 2012, sir, we had a problem about converting uh, oral claims into written claims. We made a counter, we call a countermeasure internally to report those written claims. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we did not close the loop with NHTSA, and we did not act with the urgency we needed to. Did NHTSA come back and say, what happened? Was there any dialogue? Did, did, did NHTSA, what was NHTSA's response? I mean, did, 
As you know, sir, we uh, engaged a third party to do an audit in uh, September of this year, and we had a dialogue with NHTSA in October of this year about the preliminary findings uh, of that audit. They actually found, uh, I'm glad that we used an outside third party to do that audit because they found two more instances of our noncompliance. Um, so based on that, we have dis we discussed that with NHTSA, our preliminary findings in mid-October of this year. As you know, we just submitted our information to NHTSA on Monday, and we're waiting for their response. But I think what we've done in the meantime, sir, is to uh, uh, begin to fix the computer programs to provide training, to augment the staffing, but most importantly, to establish uh, accountability within our organization. There are many functions that feed information for TREAD, and we did not, uh, we did not designate a single responsible person, and that is our failing, sir. Yield back. Thank you. Now the chair recognizes the full committee ranking member, Mr. Waxman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on November 18, NHTSA announced its intention to expand the regional recall of driver's side airbags to a nationwide recall. And on November 26, NHTSA formally requested that Takata expand to a national recall. But yesterday, Takata responded that, quote, the uh, currently available reliable information does not support a nationwide determination of a safety defect, end quote. Uh, Mr. Shimizu, uh, why does Takata believe that there is not enough evidence to support a national driver's side airbag recall? Uh, yes, Congressman. Uh, uh, we, as you know, we were collecting uh, the data from the inflator we collected from regional recalls. And uh, according to the data we have, and uh, uh, there's no, uh, uh, actually zero uh, anomaly uh, from driver side. And uh, we have some uh, anomaly uh, found in the passenger side, but all of them is come from Florida and Puerto Rico. So based on these data, uh, we consider that uh, still we should uh, stay focused on this area. And uh, at this moment, it's, uh, there's not enough scientific evidence to change from regional recall to national recall. That's the background. Do you believe the same thing is true for the regional recalls of passenger side airbags? Uh, it's a pass As I said, uh, Congressman, it's all uh, anomaly found in the passenger side in Freta. It came from Florida and Puerto Rico. Okay. Now, let me see if I can understand this decision a bit more from the consumer perspective. In the, in the continental United States, the recall only covers cars in Florida. Isn't that right? Uh, regional rec uh, are you talking about regional recalls? Yes. Yes. Uh, That's Mr. only Florida. Regional recalls covered uh, Florida, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii, and uh, Virgin Island, and some automakers covered even more in the, along the Gulf Coast. But if I have a car with a Takata airbag in Yulee, Florida, just south of the Georgia line, it's an urgent matter that I bring it in for a recall. But if I instead live 15 minutes north of that line in Kingsland, Georgia, I gather the position is that my car is perfectly safe. Is that, is that a correct assumption? Uh, based on the uh, data we collected, uh temperature and humidity, and also we call the dew point, and uh, that's the background of how we can determine the area which uh, we focus on that. So uh, that's covered is a quite wide area, and uh, if it's a uh, vehicle is used or registered in outside the area, we consider that it's uh, safe and uh, uh, no concern at this moment. Okay. M Mr. Shostak, do you, um, does that make sense to you? Fifteen minutes north, uh, you're, you're okay, but if you're in Florida, just below the line, you got to got to go in and get a a, um, uh, a, a, re, a replacement. Right, Congressman Waxman. I, I think it's also important as we talk about this to distinguish the uh, recalls regarding the manufacturing defects from this more recent regional recalls. I, I just want to make sure that the committee understands that the recalls that we conducted from 2008 through 2014 that were related to specific Takata manufacturing defects, those were national in scope. So for those uh, recalls, uh, we believe we understand the cause of the problem, that is 
to count as manufacturing defects, and those, re those cars are being recalled no matter where they are. Th what we're talking about now is from 2014 to the present, so approximately the last five months. And all of us in the industry have been asked by NHTSA to uh, uh, gather, do a safety improvement campaign to gather information and, and recall or bring back inflators that are in those high humidity states. Uh, I know when we, when we looked at that, we included contiguous counties and we expanded beyond what NHTSA asked us to do. But the idea but, is but, that if you're in certain areas, the heat and humidity would require you to uh, comply with a regional uh, recall. But uh, l let me just ask a different question. If I live in, say, Houston, Texas, it's slightly less humid there, but not by much than Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, can we be certain that my car won't develop the same defect, but perhaps uh, two or three years later? That, that's a good question, Congressman, and we asked that question ourselves, and that is why we expanded our regional recall to include Texas. Yeah. And, uh, Mr. Shimizu, uh, do you still not know the root cause of these airbag failures? Uh, Congressman, is that if questions uh, is asking about uh, regional recalls and uh, these are... Uh, no, but I'm just asking, do you know the root cause of this problem? At this moment, we, st we don't have the root, uh, real root cause. We know the factor may contribute to these uh, problems. So that's why we are con uh, still re researching these inflators collected from regions. Well, the confusing, contrary, uncertain, and sometimes purely nonsensical information comes from Takata uh, is confusing to drivers. They don't know whether their cars are safe. Uh, this confusion is exacerbated by the different ways that auto manufacturers are handling the situation. For example, until this morning, Honda had chosen to expand its regional action to 13 high humidity states and territories. This morning, we learned that Honda will be expanding to a national recall of driver's side airbags. Mr. Chostek, when and why did Honda decide to expand its recall to the uh, 13 states and, ter and territories? Congressman Waxman, we've heard this morning about NHTSA's request to Takata and the answer that Takata gave yesterday. We have, we have been uh, seriously considering, as Honda, uh, uh, expanding the safety improvement campaign uh, nationally so we can gather more data nationally. Uh, once we understood that answer yesterday from Takata, we decided to take action. We want to take care of all of our customers on a nationwide basis. However, sir, as I said in my opening statement, we still believe that the highest risk is in the uh, southern areas, those high humid areas, and that those should be prioritized with respect to replacement parts. But we believe uh, that uh, our customers have concerns, and our job is to satisfy our customers. So we want to expand the recall, the um, safety improvement campaign, uh, to include all areas of the country, again, keeping a priority on those, on those re regional areas. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from Tennessee, the vice chair of the committee, full committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank you for your good work on this. And I thank our witnesses for being uh, willing to answer these questions, because we are trying to get to the root cause of this. Mr. Waxman just mentioned that term, and Mr. Uh, Shimizu, I want to go that direction with you. Uh, let's go specifically to the November 19th New York Times article that tries to give a framework, a timeline, a chronology to this. We can't solve this problem, and by and large, we've talked about what we're doing about this, what you all are doing about it, but let's go back to how we got into this mess in the first place and why we got into this mess in the first place. And that is covered in some part in this New York Times article. And Mr. Chairman, I would like to submit this for the record. I think it speaks to both Mr. Waxman's question and to mine. If would, you said this, uh, would you please? New York just Times article. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Uh, Shimizu, I want to read to you from the article. It says, by 1999, Takata researchers in Michigan, pressured by executives, developed a propellant based on ammonium nitrate, he said. But 
the engineering team in the Moses Lake plant raised objections to basing a propellant on such a risky compound. Now, let's talk about that for a minute because I've uh, also found Michael Britton, a Takata chemical engineer, stated the following. It was a question that came up, ammonium nitrate propellant. Won't that blow up? Question he asked. And number two, Mark Lilly, a former senior engineer with Takata. It's a basic design flaw that predisposes this propellant to break apart and therefore risk catastrophic failure in an inflator. And these all were before you all made this decision. You made the decision anyway to move forward with this. Now that's a problem for us and for the American consumer and for the individuals that have lost their lives or have lost their eyesight or have been hurt by this. So what was Takata's response to the concerns raised by Mr. Britton and Mr. Lilly? Uh, Congresswomen, uh, let me explain uh, 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 about uh, materials, uh, nit uh, ammonium nitrate we are using. And uh, first, that material itself is safe and stable. And uh, I'm not aware of Mr. This. Shimizu, yes. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. That is not the response that I'm asking you for. I understand what ammonium nitrate is. I know very well what it is. I am asking you. You had two people, a senior engineer and a chemical engineer, that brought it to your attention that this was not a wise choice. I am asking you, sir, when they brought this to your attention, what did you and your team at Takata say in response to these engineers? Did you blow it off and say, it doesn't matter, it costs less? Did you say, we think we can get by with this because it is an aggressive propellant? I want to know what your response was to them. Uh, Congresswoman, I was not involved at that time, however, I know it's a lot of discussion about the selecting materials for a new type of inflator. And uh, uh, we consider the chemical properties and uh, also combustion uh, characteristic of the materials and uh, both advantage and disadvantage. And we decided that we can control the we, uh, some uh, weak area and uh, we can... Uh, Mr. Shimizu, you're avoiding the question. So let's move on. What was your first date of employment with Takata? When did you start to work for them? Uh, with Takara? Yeah. It's uh, since 1978. Since 19 oh, so you were around. Yes. So we established that you were around during that time in 99 when this decision was made. So let me ask this another way. Did any other Takata employees or outside parties warn Takata about using ammonium nitrate propellant in its airbags? Yes or no? Anybody else? Did you or anybody else warn them? I'm not aware of that. You're not aware of that. So you don't know if anybody else other than these two engineers warned them that this was a really bad idea. You don't know that. No. Were concerns about using an ammonium nitrate propellant relayed to executives at Takata, yes or no? And do you know who or when? Go ahead and answer the question. Uh, can I confirm the, uh, your question, please? Okay. Were the concerns about using ammonium nitrate as a propellant relayed to executives at Takata? Do you know if it made it up the food chain to the C-suite? I don't know about that. You don't know. Okay, well, you've got a good team with you. We will allow you to respond. My time has expired. I've got, uh, let's see, I've got five other questions. I will submit these in writing, and we would like an answer before the end of the year. Yield back. Yes. Thank you. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Mar Maryland. Who? I'm Sorry. sorry. Yeah, Mr. Sarbanes, you were recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shimizu, the uh, Takata, as I understand, has agreed to the recall 
at its expense with respect to both driver side and passenger side airbags within the regions where there are high absolute humidity. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you said to Congressman Waxman a moment ago that you do not yet know the root cause of the defect or the problem with the deployment of those airbags with respect to that regional recall. Is that correct? Uh, Congressman, it's, uh, we don't identify the root, the root cause yet. That's why we okay. are still continuing correcting the threat. But we have a, a strong uh, opinion that is a what will contribute this defect. Okay. Which is high humidity and temperature and the life of the product. Mr. Chairman, I'm glad to take more time than you want to give me, but the timer's not running, so sorry. Um, that was a courtesy. I'll get that back later sometime. That's nice. Appreciate it. Um, my question is, if you don't know the root cause, um, how do you know that the replacement part that you're providing solves the problem? Is it, is it different enough in its design that you have confidence that the replacement doesn't continue to have the same problem? Do you understand uh, yes. my question? Uh, uh, Congressman, it's, uh, uh, the current uh, product we are producing right now is uh, uh, produced from the uh, most recent line, which is all countermeasure we recently learned from the previous uh, issues was built into that. So uh, I'm quite confident that it's uh, products produced from the current uh, production line, uh, including replacement kits, uh, should work as designed and uh, safe. And, uh, okay. okay. So the production line... The issue is that you can't yet quite identify the root cause that was part of the prior production line um, that created this problem, but you have confidence that as a result of the new production line, whatever that problem might have been is now solved going forward yes. with respect to the replacement vehicles. Um, Mr. Shostak, um, <clears throat> you implied the idea that notwithstanding uh, Takata's decision to resist a national recall, uh, that um, to the extent the um, auto manufacturers on their own initiative decide to expand a, a recall nationally, um, that as a practical matter we could end up having a national recall. Um, although I guess there's some differences of opinion by the manufacturers to, to the ex scope of that, and I'm going to ask Mr. Westbrook about that in a moment. Um, I take it that if you, on your own initiative, decide to expand the recall beyond what Takata is agreeing to, you're making a decision to, at least on the front end, incur the expense of getting that replacement. Um, airbag in place, and then you'll, I guess, down the road try to recover that? Is that how it works, as opposed to where they've agreed to the recall, the expense is, is absorbed on the front end by Takata? Is that right? Congressman Sarbanes, for us, we start and end with our customers. What's right for our customers? And that's, what, uh, that's the action we're trying to take here. Uh, it, it is true that, uh, as an industry, with regard to what have been regional recalls up to this, regional uh, safety improvement campaigns up to this point in time, and now we want, we're going to make it for, for our vehicles uh, a national safety improvement campaign. It is true that we have theories, but we don't know the cause. So our uh, interest is getting as much information as possible. It's also why, as was announced yesterday, and we appreciate uh, Toyota's leadership on this issue, that we as manufacturers have decided we need to share, we need to, in, first of all, engage an expert outside third party. Uh, Takata will continue to do their tests and we'll continue to receive that information from them. But I think as an industry, we are saying, as an auto industry, we're saying it's going to be better for all of us if mm -hmm. we can gather information more quickly. And it's in all of our interests, Congressman to find the cause and then to be able to reassure all of our customers and reassure the public 
of safety on the road. So thank you. Let me let me just, Mr. Westbrook. Let me ask you because I got just one minute. Um, I understand that uh, that Honda um, supports the a national recall on the driver's side airbags, um, and on the passenger side. Um, which, by the way, on the driver's side, Takata does not support that, and Takata does not support it on the, on the passenger side. But BMW does support it um, on the passenger side, although not on the driver's side, right? Um, and that, that may be because BMW is concluding that there may be some other problem specific to the passenger side airbags that's, that even goes beyond or is separate from this other issue we've been talking about. Can you just briefly, you got 15 seconds, explain this. We have a, uh, a unique design on the passenger side that might not be known uh, to the committee. Our passenger side airbag is unique in its design and its manufacturer. Uh, from Takata in 2013, we had our first indicator uh, through production processes that the parts were out of specification. In 2014, they gave us another indication that due to high absolute humidity areas, we might have a risk. And we took then the third indicator that our unique design uh, could create the risk uh, of additional airbag-related injuries. Uh, and not related to a ruptured inflator, because as of today, we have never seen one single ruptured inflator. So we're simply trying to cover our risk and look after our customers. We think they deserve that. Uh, in terms of the national campaign, we're complying with uh, what NHTSA has sanctioned, which is, excuse me, the local campaign or so the regional campaign. That was uh, wh what, we've, what we're working on right now. Uh, and we will begin uh, independent testing. We are under contract with a well-known uh, European uh, testing organization uh, that actually specializes in propulsion and airbag safety. This is underway, and we expect to get results. We will share those results. We will collaborate. We will make everything as we've always tried to get ahead of this thing uh, and just do the right thing. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Gentlemen's time has expired. The chair now recognizes the chairman emeritus. A gentleman from Texas is recognized for your five minutes. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, here we go again. I wasn't here for the opening statements, but um, it seems like every few years we have a hearing with some automobile manufacturer that they've had some sort of a defective part or and um, they treated it as 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 more of a manufacturing quality control issue and not as a serious safety issue um, it's ironic in this case that the the part is something that's supposed to protect the driver or the passenger and it, it turned out that the, the the airbag or the deflator or something in the airbag was defective um, you know, it's none of us. I mean, we have some people that are technically trained on the committee, but we're not automotive engineers or safety experts. So, you know, we ask questions of you folks, and then later on of NHTSA, uh, and then we kind of cross our fingers. Um, you know, I, I'm just, I'm just puzzled and 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 disappointed that we're you know here we go again. Um, so I would, I would, my most serious questions will be reserved for the NHTSA witness in, a, in the second panel, but I would ask Mr. Shimizu, if, if, and I may not be pronouncing your name correctly, uh, in the short term, you know, the old saying is don't dig the hole any deeper. Um, I'm told by my friends at General Motors that there's a shortage of repair kits to, uh, to, to do the replacements, and there are, there are a, a couple of GM products that uh, were using the Takata airbags. Uh, how soon will you have enough uh, good kits available so that we can go ahead and, and do the recalls for the, the cars that, that we've already recalled? Uh, regarding uh, uh, Congressman, uh, regarding the uh, capacity of the replacement kits, uh, we uh, now uh, boost up to uh, 350,000 pieces per month, and it's going to increase to uh, 450,000 pieces per month in January by adding two more lines. And we continue to work on or discussing with automakers to increase the capacity. 
And uh, as uh, Mr. Shostak uh, mentioned, that is that uh, we also uh, uh, taking uh, option to uh, uh, evaluate the, our computers in further uh, if it's feasible. So we will take any, every action necessary to uh, support the, to speed up the replacement of the uh, well, Now, I'm, I'm just an old Aggie engineer, so I'm, but there are about 7 million cars, I think, that have all in all been recalled at, at 450,000 kits a month. That's a year and a half or longer. Do you think that's acceptable? Uh, you, it's not uh, uh, speedy enough. We understand the issues. So that's just, why uh, we are uh, discussing to add the capacity uh, of the productions. But it takes a, a month to uh, be ready for that. So uh, but we do everything we can do at this moment. Well, what, what does the driver do with a vehicle that's in a recall that's not going to be repaired for another year and a half or two years? Uh, you just disconnect the airbag? Just hope no, you don't no, have side, No, it's impossible. Uh, I understand the situation, so uh, that's why... I mean, I'm here. not trying to be rude about it, but... Yeah. You, we, we, of course, so actually, uh, uh, one, the data shows that it's uh, still, uh, we should focus on regional area. In that case, that we can uh, supply the, uh, to fulfill the demand of uh, our car makers at this moment, if we uh, focus on that area first, <laughs> With priority, or we, if we do a uh, phase, uh, taking a phase, there is a, uh, uh, by adding a, cap a production capacity, we can catch up the supplyability uh, to the demand. Well, let me, my time's about to expire. Are there other manufacturers that manufacture an equivalent airbag product that you could substitute for your airbag and repair these? these cars that have already been recalled, or is that just not technically and in, in engineering-wise feasible? It requires some validation test, but as a certain uh, computer's uh, infrared could be used to replace... I would suggest that you look at that, because the sooner the cars that have already been identified are repaired, the better off you're going to be, in my opinion. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Barton. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Yarma. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank the witnesses for their testimony today. Um, you know, I wish I could say I felt better about this situation now than I did when I walked into the room, but I, I think I feel a little bit more uncertain than I wish I did. Uh, I have a little bit of a personal history with this issue because I was a young Senate staffer on the, um, the Commerce Committee in the early 70s when Ralph Nader came to the Congress and urged the mandatory airbag legislation. And um, so I know we've been putting airbags in cars for a long time. Mr. Shasta, I'd like to hear from all the manufacturers how long you've been putting airbags in your vehicles. Uh, Congressman, uh, since, the, uh, since the 90s, I'm pretty sure the early, early 90s. Early 90s. Toyota? Not quite so sure, but I think it was uh, the late 80s that we started. could have been early 90s. And, and BMW. It's similar. Same thing. And while I know that there is, historically there have been incidences involving uh, spontaneous uh, uh, deployment of airbags and so forth, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the issue we're dealing with today, these, these um, uh, inflator ruptures, did not happen before this era that we're talking about uh, within the last 10 years. Is that correct? Are you aware of any instances of inflator rupture that occurred before the no. turn of the century? Any? No. Right. And I assume that there was no relevance of humidity in any of the prior instances of, of malfunction of airbags prior to the turn of the century, essentially, this 10-year period. So I'm getting at this issue of the root cause, because, and Mr. Shimasu, what possibly changed, other than the change in propellant that you use from before this, period, this time period, when you actually changed propellants, is there anything else that changed in the technology that you could reasonably identify as a potential cause of this inflator rupture prior to this period? Uh, 
We understand it's uh, uh, the characteristic of the materials we use, which is uh, ammonium nitrate, and uh, 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 we consider it's a uh, uh, moisture have to be uh, uh, controlled at the, during the operation, and we do it. And uh, unfortunately, we had some issues in the past and uh, uh, of the equipment and the moisture control. But it's, uh, uh, we believe that we will control, we'll manage the environment of the operation. Uh, lifetime can be 15 years more or. But uh, what I'm getting at is, I think we've pretty much excluded any other potential root cause, other than the propellant that's being used. Nothing else changed in technology. Not, none of these occurrences uh, happened before the change in propellant. So regardless of whether it's humidity related, temperature related, or, or re the propellant seems to be the only variable that could be responsible for these kinds of malfunctions. Is that correct or not? I mean, nothing, if nothing else changed and we never saw it before you changed propellants, uh, wouldn't you say that that's reasonably it's reasonable to assume that the propellant is the root cause? Uh, Congressman, it's, uh, uh, this uh, rapture case is uh, happened either uh, uh, abnormal chemical reaction inside the inter uh, inflator or weakness of the inflator body. So either if the balance was uh, not there, then it's rapture may happen. So uh, we are focused on the uh, uh, materials also now and, uh, but it's also that one of the factors we can consider is the body side. But at this moment, according to our investigation, we didn't see any uh, abnormality uh, on the body side. That's why we focus on the materials. Okay. Going a little bit further, and, and this is expanding on Mr. Sarbane's question, um, you filed a 573 safety recall report just uh, a month or so ago uh, involving a de defect in the, the uh, airbags produced in Mexico, is that correct? Yes, the airbag was produced so, in Mexico for North America. Right, so you've, you, you're actually still producing airbags that have defects in them, and I don't know what the nature of that defect was, but again, it goes to the question of, and I, I know we don't have too much time, it goes to the question of whether we can be reliably, or we can be confident that even the replacements that are being provided are safe and I guess any of the, the manufacturing representatives who are here might want to respond. How can you be confident that the replacement parts you're putting in or that the airbags you're putting in today are safe if you're still buying them from Tanaka? Takata, I'm sorry. It's a, Congressman, it's a, uh, uh, that uh, specific issue is uh, happened in Mexico, but it's uh, not current, it's uh, uh, many years ago. And uh, 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 if my, uh, understand it's correct, is that plant is already closed and moved to Mexico. And uh, uh, we, as I said, it's all lesson learned from previous issues. We, address to the, uh, we identify the problems and address to the production process and taken care of. So the current production is, as I said repeatedly, is uh, capable to produce a quality parts, and I'm very confident that it's a, a quality, a required quality is there. I'd like to submit, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the, that question. I have the, the manufacturers respond to the committee as to how we can be confident that the equipment that they're using today is, is safe. Thank you Absolutely. very much. I yield, I yield back. The uh, chair recognizes the vice chair of the subcommittee, the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Lance. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Sadat. Are Toyotas on the road in the United States today safe regarding the airbag issue? Sir, every time um, there's a safety recall yes. and the vehicle has yet to be repaired, yes. there's always a risk. Yes. Okay. In the case of people residing in the area of high and humidity, we are urging our customers to please follow the instructions of the letters that we've sent to them and as long as they do that, they can operate the vehicle safely. And uh, if that is done, uh, there are enough uh, airbags available so that that can be uh, accomplished immediately? Uh, Takata has indicated that they have significantly increased the production starting from this month. And uh, I think we have a good uh, amount of inflators that we should Thank be you, Mr. Westbrook. The same question to you regarding uh, BMWs. Would you repeat, please? I'm sorry. The further about safe? Yes, our BMW is safe for uh, the driving public in the United States of America today. We believe they are. We have, to, uh, we have 
we, we have no knowledge of any uh, inflator rupture to this date on any BMW, on any airbag, on any side of the car. Uh, same question to you, uh, Mr. Shostak, regarding uh, Hondas. Yes, Mr. Vice Chairman. There are uh, recalls in effect for Honda vehicles from the past, and we are urging those customers to get their vehicles fixed. If there's not a recall, uh, then I think uh, we, we do believe that those customers are safe. I do want to address the situation. In and the there field. are enough airbags so that for those that are being recalled, the problem can be fixed immediately? That's where I was going, sir. Yes. At, up to, at the present time, we have seen the supply of replacement parts uh, is adequate to match the demand. Uh, we're, we appreciate the attention on this issue. It's actually causing more customers to come forward and to get their, to get their vehicles repaired. These are usually older vehicles, and uh, getting a high completion rate on recalls is, is difficult. And to you're do, confident that uh, the recalls you have suggested uh, are inclusive of all of the problems? Yes, sir. And that there's not likely to be further recalls of Hondas? There is a... Uh, safety information campaign where uh, Takata has not yet identified uh, the defect or cause of that. We are uh, participating as our other industry members with that. We want to, we're going to expand that to a national in, uh, campaign as we, as we talked about this morning. And there may be, sir, a time when replacement parts uh, uh, be become a little short. That's why we're working with not only Takata, but uh, two other manufacturers, AutoLeave and Dysel, and uh, we believe, based on recent discussions with those other companies, that there are good prospects to reduce the shortage. There's not a shortage right now, sir. We expect there may be a shortage in the foreseeable future, but that we're trying to do our best to Thank reduce you. Thank the you. length Thank you, Mr. Of the shortage. Shimizu. Um, yes. I have in front of me the letter that Takata sent in response to uh, uh, the request of the government. Uh, letter is dated yesterday. It is from... Mike Raines, the Director of Product Safety. Does he work for you? Uh, yes. And he's Director of Product Safety uh, in this country or throughout the entire system? It's a mainly focused on the, this country. This country. Thank you. I, I find the response uh, uh, t tendentious, argumentative, and not particularly helpful. Uh, for example, uh, uh, Takata complains that uh, you have only had two working days to respond giving the intervening Thanksgiving holiday. How long has Takata known about this problem? Certainly more than two working days. Uh, excuse me, can, uh, could you repeat the question again? I, I find the response yes. to Nitsa, and we will be asking Nitsa about this later because uh, this is our next witness. Uh, I find the letter very unhelpful and extremely tendentious. Um, Takata's current view, uh, that based upon reliable information, does not support a nationwide determination of a safety defect in all vehicles equipped with the subject driver's side inflators. That is not the view of the agency at the federal government that protects the American people. And so you are dramatically and diametrically in opposition uh, to the view of NHTSA. Is that accurate? Uh, can I confirm the question? Certainly. Excuse me. Uh, Congressman, sorry it takes so long. C uh, certainly, yeah. certainly. You have every right to confer with yeah. your uh, colleague. Yes, that uh, uh, correct. That is our statement. Uh, thank you. I in conclusion, and we'll be asking this of NHTSA uh, later in the hearing, um, on November 26, NHTSA demanded a national recall of driver's side frontal airbags in writing with a deadline of December 2nd. You have responded in the negative. Uh, if the company fails to act, NHTSA will continue the statutorily required process needed to force Takata to act. And certainly my line of questioning this afternoon will be related to that. Um, I, I think that we have to work more closely together to make sure that the American people are safe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I chair recognize gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Harper, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank each of you for being here today. Mr. Uh, Shimizu, uh, 
you know, this is a matter of, uh, of safety and concern for, for everyone as a driver, the families, yes, uh, children, those that, uh, that might be uh, impacted. Can I ask you, uh, the propellant that's used, it's the ammonium nitrate-based uh, propellant that's used now. When was the decision made to, and when did you stop using uh, tetrazole? and move to uh, the ammonium nitrate-based propellant? That's, uh, <coughs> uh, I'm not sure, Congressman, exactly which year, uh, but uh, I believe it is early 2003 or uh, let me confirm the exact date so I'll get back it, to it, you. It's been at least uh, more than 10 years ago, yes. correct? Yes. Uh, maybe late 1990s, early yeah. 2000. Uh, what is the cost difference between the propellant of tetrazole versus what's used now? What, how much does that affect the price of an airbag? Uh, according to my knowledge, it's, uh, uh, there's no much difference, but it's, uh, uh, I don't know the actual cost. Okay, but isn't tetrazole, tetrazole much more expensive as a propellant? Only I can guess is uh, uh, ammonium nitrate is not more expensive than tetrazole. Well, why was the decision made to switch from one to the other, if but for cost? No, it's a reason to change. Uh, reason to change to ammonium nitrate is not the cost. It's because of the uh, uh, there are many other reasons why we choose uh, ammonium nitrate. Are the replacement? What is the propellant for the replacement airbags that you're manufacturing as we speak? Uh, excuse me. Uh, could what, is, what propellant is used on the replacement airbags, the ones that you're manufacturing now? Uh, yes, it's the uh, same uh, propellant we used before. Do you foresee changing the propellant as you move forward with uh, ramping up your production of those to approximately 450,000 per month? Uh, it's if it's we have to change the uh, materials uh, when, uh, to replace the uh, uh, parts for the recalls, then it's uh, because the characteristic of the uh, inflator itself is different, so we have to go through the validation test. Uh, that's the main reason we continue to use the same uh, inflator, and uh, of course that was come from the current production line, so it's considered safe. And uh, one more thing, uh, if I can, it's uh, we have second generation inflator also, which is we used for another type of models, and that uh, we continue to work on improving the performance of the propellant or inflator. Do you believe that the cause of the ruptures or the early deployment of these airbags or the ineffectiveness of it, is that due to the uh, propellant, or do you believe that it's some other cause? Uh, this is, uh, my understanding is uh, this cause of the problems is not uh, materials we use. It's because of the uh, manufacturing processes and uh, humidity control in the plant. I, I certainly want to, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Sadat some questions, if I may, with uh, Toyota on, on the approach that, that you've had. How many vehicles, Toyota vehicles, are impacted by the recall? Uh, approximately 878,000. And uh, it's, it's my understanding that Toyota was the first uh, to initiate a nationwide recall. Is that correct? And our nationwide recall has been in effect since 2013, April of 2013. And just as a matter of convenience, are you providing uh, loaner, loaner vehicles to uh, the customers that come in? Are, are you giving them a vehicle, a, a loaner? Yes, if that's, what they, if okay. that's what they desire, yes. Okay, Mr. Westbrook, is that something you're, uh, that BMW is doing? That is what we're doing, yes. Okay. And Honda? Yes, Congressman. Right now, as I said, parts are inadequate supply right now, but if, if a customer needs a loaner vehicle or a rental car, we provide that to them at no charge. Mr. Uh, Sadat, if I may ask, uh, you mentioned earlier, and I know we covered it, but you said there are not any driver's side airbag issues for Toyota. Why is that? The problematic inflators that Takata has identified, they're not installed in our driver's side in the U.S. Different supplier for your driver's side airbag? Yes. Okay. Uh, what, what prompted you, Mr. Sadat, to start uh, supplying inflators to Takata for testing? Uh, there was a preliminary evaluation uh, that was opened by uh, NHTSA in June of uh, this year and requested all automakers to send uh, parts that they have collected. Okay. 
uh, and send them to Takata for testing. And that's what prompted us. What about independent testing? What, what are we doing there? In terms of independent testing, uh, we uh, uh, have retained the service of an independent engineering firm to be able to help us and give us more assurances on the root cause of uh, this issue. Mr. Westbrook, any independent testing that BMW is engaging in yet? We are uh, under contract to begin engaging in that. We are collecting uh, the airbags uh, under the, you know, this regional uh, campaign, uh, and we'll short, uh, start that shortly and make those results available. Thank you very much. Uh, my time has expired. I yield back. Chair, I recognize the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Long, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Shimazu, how many people would need to die before you'd be willing to do a nationwide recall? It's including uh, Malaysia. It's, uh, I remember the, uh, five people died from the incident. But that, that's what have died now. But what my question is, how many more would need to die before you do what NETSA recommends, which is a nationwide recall? I don't think it's... Do you have a litmus test? I mean... Uh, again, it's, uh, uh, we are still doing the additional recalls uh, for researching purpose, and uh, we didn't identify the root cause of this problem yet. But it's, uh, uh, the, it's such an incident, a uh, serious incident, a chance to have, uh, have such an incident in outside region is uh, minimal in my, according to the data we have. It's my understanding that the airbag, when it explodes, it's metal projectile, shrapnel, so to speak, that has cut veins and led to some of these deaths. Is that correct? Uh, once it's happened, it's, that's the phenomenon, yes. So it's sort of tantamount to driving down the highway with possibly a shotgun aimed at you behind the steering wheel or behind the glove box, I guess, and not knowing which airbag is going to explode at what time and act as a shotgun would, such as shrapnel. Uh, Congressman, it's uh, 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 in the past, uh, two million uh, times is uh, airbag deployed uh, as designed and saved the people's lives and uh, uh, also saved the people uh, from the serious injury from the accident. And uh, yes, we have some issues and uh, we have to address that and uh, uh, as we did in the past. Uh, so we consider that it's uh, uh, products we are making right now uh, today is safe and also uh, some, we have some concerns on the region, which is with high temperature, high humidity. That's why uh, we are uh, continuing to investigate uh, to identify the root of cause right now. You're, you're confident the ones you're making now are safe, but we all know that there's the ones that are on the road now, there's a possibility they are not safe, correct? Uh, that would be covered with a nationwide recall. Excuse me, let me confirm. Sure. It's a congressman, sorry, take time. Well, it's a, uh, for the uh, area uh, outside lane, outside uh, regional recall, is uh, all data we have doesn't uh, support uh, such a uh, risk at this moment. So we consider it's uh, safe. I don't know that I understood the answer. Yeah, okay. the, my, my question is the ones that are being manufactured today, you're confident are safe, but the ones that are out there on the road now that will not be recalled because you're not willing to do a nationwide recall, right. those are not safe, perhaps, correct? We consider that it's safe. Uh, you think they are safe? Pardon? You think they are safe? Yes. Okay. And you're confident uh, from the testimony I've heard today, I'm given to understand that you think that it is a humidity and a heat function of heat and humidity. Is that a one-time situation or is it a compound situation? Let me give you an example. If I live in Cheyenne, Wyoming, low humidity, and I want to go to a wedding in Jacksonville, Florida, in my Honda that has a Takata airbag, 
should I make that trip? Am I okay to go down there? I'm only going to be there a few days in the heat and humidity. Would that be a safe trip to take or not? It's a, uh, Congressman, I've considered it's a like, kind of compound situation, it's which is uh, uh, the vehicles or products have to be an uh, extensive period of time and, uh, and under the high temperature, high humidity uh, conditions. Okay, so if, if I was going to move from Cheyenne, Wyoming to take a job in Jacksonville, Florida, and I was going to be there, then you'd recommend that I get my airbag replaced, correct? Uh, if I was going to live there year-round and there was going to be heat and humidity year-round, you'd recommend I get the airbag replaced? There are many. Uh, I want to keep my family safe. <laughs> it's a, I consider it safe, but it's a, that's why we still didn't uh, identify the root cause yet. So that's why we continue to test. Uh, so it's hard to answer to the question. Let me, let me ask the gentleman from Honda, Mr. Shostek, is that correct? Shostek, that's right, sir. Uh, same question to you. Shy, I live in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I want to go to Jacksonville, Florida, for a, take the family down there for a wedding. Are you confident I'm, I'm safe in a Honda to do that, or is it a compound effect on the heat and humidity? Should people not travel to these high heat and humidity areas with Takata airbags and for short trips? Again, okay, we've had national recalls related to Takata manufacturing defects. Hey, that's not my question. I appreciate you've done that. Okay. I mean, that's what I think Takata should do is a national recall. But and I appreciate that Honda's done that. My question is, if someone was going to make a trip and had not done the recall process. Yeah, Congressman Long, the, the phenomena of inflated ruptures that we've, that we've seen over the years uh, is occurring in vehicles that are uh, uh, fairly old vehicles, 8 years old, 10 years old, 12 years old. So the five it, deaths and Hondas be have some been function of time. older cars. Yeah, and the, I think the... Um, uh, discussion about heat and humidity, the, 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 the theory about that is it's um, over a prolonged period of time um, that, that, that heat and humidity cycle of, uh, potentially affecting the propellant. What's the newest car someone has deceased in a, in a Honda? What's the latest year model? Sir, I believe it was a 2004, but I'd have to check. And that would have been what year what the, the tragedy occurred? Um, The most recent one occurred this year, sir, yeah. but in a 2004 model. You know, there's been four fatalities in Honda vehicles. All I thought there had been five. So uh, I'm sorry, four in the U.S. and one in Malaysia. So there have been four fatalities in the U.S. in Honda vehicles. Uh, all of those vehicles were, su were subject to that national recall. One was... Right. No, no I appreciate Honda doing that. I appreciate and, and you doing we, that, but I just we think Honda should do that. Gentlemen's time. I don't have any time, fire. but I'd yield it we'll back if I did. Thank you. A uh, gentleman from Illinois is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we're going to miss you. You've been a fantastic chairman, good friend, and uh, uh, I know you have uh, some great chapters ahead, but congratulations on the work you've done on this committee. Uh, to all of you, thank you for being out here. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. I may not even take all my five minutes. We'll make up for Billy Long there. Um, sorry, Billy. Do you guys, uh, to, the three of, to the three of you, I'll just ask uh, generally, do you believe there is currently sufficient data available to support NHTSA's call for national safety recall for all Takata driver's side airbags? No. Okay. Um, if, I'm sorry. Well, we'll just ask down the line for you guys. Go ahead. In, in reference to driver's side, we, as I as stated, we don't have any of those problematic inflators on our driver's side. Okay. So you haven't seen that. And as we inform the committee today, we uh, are taking the action to expand our safety improvement campaign for driver's side recalls from regional to, to national. Uh, we want to get more information to help uh, others in the industry as well as Takata and ourselves to understand what the, what, uh, what the defect is, if there's a defect, and to, and to determine the cause. I think it's important to understand from the customer's viewpoint, Congressman, that we, you know, we use these words safety improvement campaign and recall, and I know it can be confusing to customers, and we're certainly sympathetic and empathetic toward that. The notice that arrives in the customer's mailbox, whether it's one or the other, says your vehicle is subject to recall, please bring it in. So uh, we've really focused ourselves, our attention on, okay, what, what's happening in the field? What's happening with our customers? How do they understand uh, what is going on here? And we're really trying to redouble our efforts to make sure that they understand uh, that we want them to bring that vehicle in so that we can replace the inflator uh, 
and then we need to do testing. Sure. Kata needs to do testing. Uh, we as OEMs need to do testing. We talked about engaging a, a third party uh, expert engineering firm to do okay. testing because there is still engineering work to do. We're all engineering companies here. Yeah, we I want to find the answer to this. I'm gonna, in, the I'm meantime, gonna sh in the meantime, I think our focus has to be on what we can do to our customers. I'm just, okay. just I got you. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm going to shift gears. Uh, there's been a significant discussion about regional recalls and the movement of uh, recalled vehicles from high humidity states to other states outside of those regions. I believe an area that needs focus by automakers is the commerce of recycled original equipment manufacturer parts. Uh, each day over a half million recycled OEM parts, the very same parts designed by your companies to meet your fit, finish, and durability standards are sold by professional automotive recyclers. These parts play an important part in the automotive supply chain and are readily sold from one state or region of the country to another. Uh, recently, GM reached out to professional automotive recycler, recyclers offering to buy back uh, or purchase recalled GM ignition switches. To accomplish this, GM provided specific OEM part numbers for the ignition switches that were critical to ensure that automotive recyclers could identify the specific recalled parts in their company's inventories. Do you, uh, to, the, to the, those representing the car companies, do you agree that sharing OEM part numbers and other identifiable information with the professional automotive recycling industry would increase safety? Um, and yeah, so we'll start with that. Yeah, Congressman, I'm, I myself am not familiar with the GM action that you described, and I'm gonna, I will gladly check into it and get back to you on that. But I would bring up another point. Uh, counterfeit airbags are a problem in this country as well, and we've been working hard uh, to state by state um, try to uh, stop the uh, use of counterfeit airbags. That's a big danger to consumers. Uh, we think it's a big danger to our customers. Right. We've had some success in some states. But on the recyclers, sir, I would like to check and get back to you. Right, you too. We have a process called the automated parts return. Uh, and any component like an airbag is subject to this process. As far as I know, whether it's a recall or not, those go back to us. If a company like a recycler wants our mirror caps, they can have them. Sir. I'm an engineer, and you know, I can't really comment on legislative issues, but I'll be happy to provide a response to you later. Okay, and, and would sharing that information, would that help you to, would that assist your companies in tracking recalled parts? Sharing what information, please? Uh, the OEM part numbers with recyclers. I can't see that. Okay, all right. Do Honda, Toyota, and BMW currently have a similar buyback program in place with professional automotive recyclers? You guys might have already addressed that. Sorry, Congressman, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. I'll, I'll be happy to check and get back to you. Okay, great, thanks. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll yield back 10 seconds. Thank you, and now the chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Bill Arrakis, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate all your good work on, on this committee and in Congress as a whole, we are gonna miss you. Uh, this is a fundamental issue of safety, and Americans must be able to trust that the cars they drive are safe. I'm sure you'll agree with that. Um, instead, millions of Americans have been driving cars with potentially deadly airbags. Uh, I represent uh, the area that I represent, of course, has an increased risk because of this defect, uh, has been, generally been in parts of the country with uh, high humidity, and it's been stated. Uh, Florida has many residents that are transient. I know you know that too. Mr. Sadat, uh, Mr. Shosky, and uh, Mr. Westbrook, the question is for you. What measures are you taking to correct, identify, co correctly identify customers whose vehicles have been in high humidity areas for prolonged periods? How are you contacting them? We'll start with uh, Mr. Sadat. Um, first of all, um, in terms of uh, uh, region. Uh, what we have is we basically look at the latest registration, uh, number one. We're also looking at um, snowbirds, you know, if uh, a vehicle is transferred and brought to, uh, you know, the region. And uh, if uh, there is a, in general, if there is a regional recall, we contact our customers um, outside of a region who had their vehicles in the region. Or, or vice versa. So that's. What about if somebody buys a used car? <coughs> How would you address that? Uh, used, we, we look at the latest registration. Yeah. And based on that, we'll get the information, we'll contact them. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Shoskin. 
Yes, thank you, Congressman. Thank you for asking that question. Florida has been the site of 17 uh, of the incidents that involve Honda vehicles, by far the most of any state and by far our biggest concern. In fact, there was an article, I think, in late September in, uh, in one, of the, one of the newspapers that uh, inaccurately reported that Honda was uh, asking dealers not to contact customers. Uh, they were misconstruing a message that we had sent to our dealers. In fact, what had happened at that very same time, sir, in the state of Florida, we had begun 93,000 calls, sent out 125,000 emails, and sent out 76,000 postcards. We believe the risk is highest in your state, and we are putting extra effort into locating customers in your state and having some success with that, sir. Okay. Next, uh, I'd like to hear from Mr. Westbrook. Um, we have maybe half of it covered. We have a way to uh, track the car that was bought in Florida because it will be subject uh, to the recall, and that's linked to the VIN by our database. We would, uh, I do not have an answer to how we would have a way to track a car that maybe were bought in Michigan and spent the other half of the year in Florida, but I would like to get back on that. Well, please work on that, and, and I'd like I to hear from you. I will. Please. Okay. Uh, Again, for the, the entire panel, would you let a family member drive a car with a Takata airbag? I'd like for you to answer that. Would you let a family member drive a car with a Takata airbag? If the uh, car was subject to recall, I would advise that family member to get it in as soon as possible and get it fixed. If the car is not subject to a recall, yes, I would let my family member, I would drive a car with a Takata airbag. I'd like to hear from the entire panel. Yes, I do. I would drive the car with our airbag. Interpret. Mr. Westbrook. I would drive a BMW uh, with the passenger re uh, recall in place. If a family member lives in the uh, higher risk area, I urge them to take the vehicle and uh, uh, actually, first of all, follow the instruction, the letters that we've sent to them, and uh, they can operate it safely and take the vehicle. We'll try to get, take care of them. Would you let them drive it after, after they went through that? Would, they, would you let them drive the, uh, or in other words, would you allow them to drive it or would you prefer that they drive it? Um, after the remedy is done, uh, based on the information that Takata has uh, indicated, you know, that they have uh, addressed the root cause, yes. But and you would same. trust Takata? Uh, at, at, as I said before, we have uh, retained the service of an independent engineering firm to give us more assurances, sir. Uh, next question, I know I don't have much time. Uh, uh, Mr. Shimizu, Takata has known there were potentially <coughs> issues with its airbags as far back as 2004. A decade has passed by, a full decade. Why hasn't your company been able to fix this life-threatening defect since then? Uh, Congressman, every time we recognize uh, the incident or uh, issues, we uh, immediately uh, jump onto the uh, problems and uh, try to find the root cause of the issues. And uh, as soon as we identify the root cause, we took care of the, we address the issues and we take care of the problems. Yeah, but sir, I mean, it's been a full decade, 10 years. Yeah, it's, it's a series of... Uh, I don't think there's did. any excuse for not solving the, the problem. It's uh, every time we find problems and we, uh, we immediately take actions. However, uh, it's true that we have a series of recalls and, uh, uh, and a different uh, timing and uh, we have some uh, different cause of the problems. So it's not the same problems all the time. Okay, thank you. I thank you, back, you, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman from West Virginia is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, let me... Uh, let me try to focus a little bit on the, on the recall notices um, because we're not going to have success with this unless people bring their cars in and get this thing taken care of. And we also know that the, uh, traditionally 30 to 40 percent of people ignore the recall notice. And if you think back a little bit about when Moses came down from the mountain with, he came down with Ten Commandments. He didn't come down with 10 good ideas. So I'm concerned about how, how much of an emphasis is in that notice that you better get your car back in. Because I've got two notices on my car. I've got a Chevy Cruze, and I haven't done anything with it yet because I don't know yet whether or not it's a life-threatening situation in my car, and I have ignored it. So I know that 30 to 40% of people ignore them. 
how effective is the notice that you all were given that this car could provide us, Mr. Long said, a shotgun blasting at you? Um, I'm just curious, what, what is the, what's the content of your notice? Is it just a good idea to bring it in? Or if you don't bring it in, we're going to come after it? Let me answer first. Um, we have uh, recently um, implemented secondary outreach program, and one in particular is contacting each customer by phone, emails, and follow-up mails to urge them to bring their vehicle in. If they don't feel safe, we ask them, we'll, we'll tow the vehicles to, you know, to the dealership. And so that's the secondary outreach program. We've improved our, our website. Could you, share, could you share with us a, a, a notice that you put out? You're doing a telephone call as well with it. I don't know what BMW or, or I mean, we've got 10, 12 manufacturers are using these. I'm just curious, could you send our office a, a, just a typical notice that when you put out a recall? Uh, Congressman, I, I'm just curious to see right. what, what value is it? Do you really... Do you scare them? Is this a commandment, or is this just a good idea? To bring and I think, in? Congressman, you're hitting on a fundamental problem. It's a very important question because, the, you know, we, we, we need to reach our customers. We have to convince our customers yes. to get these recalled. We're talking about older vehicles here. We will send you, sir, both the notice that we send with regard to a recall and the notice we send with regard to a safety improvement campaign. I've looked at both of them. The letter is pretty strong. The request is pretty okay. strong. Please, that, if please, you could just send that to me, I'd, I'd appreciate that. it very much on it. Let me go to another step with this, this recall notice, because um, Carfax apparently doesn't tell you where your car is. If I'm going to buy a used car, I don't, I don't know, and maybe you can inform me or educate me about it, but I don't know, I don't believe Carfax says that car came from Florida. But now I own a car that's been in Florida for 12 years, and I, I buy the car in West Virginia. Um, am I going to get a notice that there's a recall? If that car is recalled, sir, we are checking our um, uh, it's a yes or no identification answer. numbers. It's, it's, with it isn't a yes or no. Right. Um, thank you. Yes, you isn't, should. Yes. I, I will if, get if notice. If a car has ever been registered in one of those states. Because it'll go by the VIN number. It'll yes, say that, that, that you know you know that car. Because I, let's just say I bought a car in West Virginia, mm -hmm. so it's registered in West Virginia. But then I take it to Florida and, and I use it in Florida for 12 years, and then I bring it back to West Virginia or, or however. Right. I, what's the? Who knows where that car really is? It's a it's a very good question, and and obviously we can't sit here and provide you with 100 percent assurance that we that we were able to track track a car. We we do have we do check registration information in the various states, so we do know it that way. But it's an area that we need to work harder at, sir. Yeah, well, that's sure Honda. What about BMW and, and Toyota? Better, what are you, what are you all doing? Is there is some? I'm just curious. To, from a pure mechanical standpoint, how are we checking this? This is similar to the answer that we gave, uh, that I gave to uh, Congressman Bill Rockus from Florida. Uh, I think we have it in the car uh, going the one way. So in other words, if the car is registered in Florida and we have a, a campaign in Florida, it's going to be uh, cross-linked to that uh, vehicle identification number. Uh, the other way around is more difficult to figure out, and as committed earlier, we'll try to get to the bottom of that. Okay. Um, let, let, me, let me answer the final question with this is that if, if, I'm, if I have a concern about my car and I've I've not received a, a, um, a recall notice, and I take it to a dealer, and I say, I I'm just uncomfortable. I see across the nation there have been deaths reported this, and I'd like to have my uh, airbag replaced. What does the dealer do? He says, sure, I I I'll, I'll take care of it next week. Or does he say, you don't fit the profile, therefore we're not going to replace it. If that's the case, if he says no, where is the liability then? Congressman, we, we've instructed our dealers that we want the, uh, our customers to be taken care of and want them to feel comfortable. If they, are, if they are concerned about their car, we have loaner cars available, we have rental cars available, if a part is not available to be to be. Wait, just and just this week, Congressman, I, have, I requested our service division to contact each and every dealer we have in the United States. We have 1,300, more than 1,300 Honda and Acura dealers to contact them individually and ensure that the treatment that the customers are receiving and the respect that the customers are receiving with regard to these inflator issues is up to our expectations. We expect 
our dealers to accommodate our customers' Even individual, if they're not, individual but needs. They're not, they've not been recalled. They're individual Notice. needs. That's they're correct. going to be taken and, and at no cost to the owner. At no cost to the owner. Thank you. Thank you very much. I yield back my time. Uh, Chair recognizes the gentleman from Ohio for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to also add my, uh, 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 my thoughts to you as you make this transition. It's been great serving with you on this committee, and uh, I wish you the absolute best. Uh, Mr. Uh, Shimizu, um, I want to get a little bit into the manufacturing. I, I came uh, prior to coming to Congress. I worked for uh, an automotive supplier. Uh, we made electronic components. Uh, some of the, the plants were located near where some of your plants are located. Um, we understand that there are five inflator types that have been subjected to these recalls. In terms of producing replacement kits for those that have to be replaced, can Takata simultaneously produce new inflators for each type as well as uh, replacement kits for each type simultaneously? Uh, Congressman, most of the case, uh, each type of the inflator has their own ex exclusive line. So answer is yes, we can do it. You can do replacements case, yes. and new. Okay. Um, along these same lines, are passenger and driver airbag inflators produced on the same uh, uh, line or on separate lines? Uh, passenger inflator and driver inflator, we produce a completely different line but the same, from the same plant. Same plant, yes. but different lines. Yes. Okay. Does, does an increase in the production of replacement parts, driver's side replacement parts, affect your ability to produce passenger uh, airbag inflators? Could you repeat your question again? Does an increase in the production of driver's side airbags, does that affect your ability to produce passenger side bags? Since they're on separate lines, I think the answer to that is no, correct? Correct. Okay. All right. Um, for our folks at, at, at Honda, um, what analysis, and I saw, the, I saw the press release about the uh, uh, the uh, analysis that you're going to be doing. I think uh, if I've got it right here, um, Honda today called for a coordinated industry-wide third-party testing of Takata airbag inflators with the goal of ensuring that all of the inflators that require replacement are accurately identified and fixed as quickly as possible. Um, what analysis uh, did Honda undergo, um, if any, uh, and, and was it independent? Uh, have you done any independent analysis to date to determine if a, if a recall of the airbags are, are necessary? Yeah. Or the inflators, rather? Thank you, Congressman. I, I think we need to separate the uh, uh, recall decision versus uh, in, in testing. So mm -hmm. uh, the recall decision that we make is based on information that we receive, for example, from uh, Takata with regard to manufacturing defects. They told us what those manufacturing defects were. We did not simply blindly accept their analysis, but uh, our engineers looked at it and thought, you know, was it reasonable? And therefore, based on that, we have affected recalls over time. With regard to the current problem, which is uh, trying to understand um, the cause of the, uh, is there a defect and what could be the contributing causes, for example, heat, humidity. We began some independent testing very recently, but we were really uh, appreciative that others in the auto industry, and especially with Toyota's leadership, that we were able to announce yesterday that many of us are coming together to share information about testing. So. We, we still have high expectations of Takata to continue to do their testing, but I think I can speak for Honda. I can't speak for the other OEMs, but I can speak for Honda that we feel a, a need to validate that and see what else we can come up with using an expert third-party uh, engineering firm. Just, uh, just real quick, um, we know that uh, at least some of the data has indicated that humidity, temperature, climate has had an effect on these inflators. 
Um, are, are you folks doing testing on virtually every climate uh, uh, scenario in America, the different regions of the country, because, you know, and, and seasonal, because it changes from season to season and from region to region of our country. So are you looking at things other than humidity, like dryness, uh, you know, whatever? Yeah, a, a very good question. And uh, the answer, I, I can't go as far as to say every climactic condition in the country, because that would be a little going a little too far, I think. But we, we are testing from the, the, the humid areas, but also from other areas of the country. The purpose of a good engineering study is to have a, you know, different samples to, to look at. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's what we're, that's what we're, we're doing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm prepared to yield back, but let me just make this statement. Uh, again, coming from an automotive supplier myself, um, uh, and I appreciate your candor, uh, but I think it's a little bit short-sighted to say that we can't test for all the different climate conditions in the country. If we already know these inflators are affected by humidity, for God's sakes, we don't know what other climate situations affect the inflators as well, uh, and I think we need to get to the bottom of that as well. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back and thank you. Thank you. Uh, does the gentleman from Texas, Dr. Burgess, have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for letting me be here. I will not seek time with this panel. I'm anxious to hear from our next witness. So I Thank you. Uh, there has been a request from the full committee chair. Uh, therefore, uh, by my set of rules, he is uh, yeah, I would ask you, Nam, then, just to, to pose a, another, another question. And I, um, you know, there's, there's been a number of different articles that have been written over the last uh, number of weeks uh, regarding uh, secret tests. Uh, and I'm looking at, uh, we'll give you this for the record. This is a CNBC story. And it reads, early the Japanese manufacturer Takata secretly conducted tests on 50 airbags that it retrieved from scrap yards, according to two former employees involved in the test, one of whom was a senior member of its testing lab. Results were so startling that engineers began designing possible fixes in preparation for a recall but instead of alerting federal safety regulators to possible danger, Takata executive discounted the results and ordered the lab technicians to delete the testing data from their computers and dispose of the airbag inflators in the trash, they said. Um, it goes on in USA Today. Other publications have uh, reported similar s stories. This particular story um, indicates that a Honda spokesman, this must have been last week, on Thursday, Chris Martin from Honda said in a statement, this is a serious allegation about actions taken by Takata. It is our intention to determine whether anyone at Honda has any evidence that these claims are credible. So I'm anxious just to get a quick response. Uh, but more disturbing, of course, is the Takata uh, spokesperson, Albi Berman, declined to comment on the disclosure of the testing. So if I could just hear from Takata and Honda briefly, if you'd like to respond in writing, um, you can. But I'm, I'm truly troubled by these stories, which is what helped lead us to this hearing today. Uh, and we'll be asking similar questions of NHTSA, who follows you now. But I uh, ask for the indulgence of the committee to get, to get a response, and uh, maybe yeah, we'll hear. Congressman Upton, you, you mentioned uh, Mr. Martin, a uh, Honda representative quoted in there. Uh, uh, we are continuing to uh, look and to, to see if we have any, any reason to add any credibility to that. Up to this point, sir, as I, as I sit here, I cannot add any credibility to that. We will continue to look, uh, uh, and, uh, but I don't know of any Honda awareness of that testing in 2004. So. And th this story indicates that the testing was done in Auburn Hills, that's in Michigan. And of course, this was about the time that we were doing the TRUD Act, which was a pretty big story in Michigan. Uh, Congressman, uh, my response to the, your question is, uh, first, we don't have conduct any uh, secret test in, during 2004. However, uh, according to our record, we conducted a, a series of tests in 2004 because of the cushion issues. And uh, we have some cushion uh, uh, tears issues happen, and uh, uh, actually NHTSA, uh, the one is founded during their test, test and then uh, needs to uh, inform to uh, automakers, and then as they end up to uh, request us to uh, do a series of tests within a limited time. So we conduct a series of tests 
uh, because uh, cushion tears from not inflators, and not we don't use the, any inflator from junkyard either. Uh, so I think the article is not that uh, inaccurate, but as a, as a fact is we did conduct a series of tests because of cushion issues, and actually NHTSA uh, uh, knows about it because it's an original request from NHTSA, and then uh, uh, after we finished the test, uh, we found the root cause, and, uh, which is the abrasion between plastic cover and the cushions that create the uh, weakened cushion and end up to the uh, cause uh, cushion tears, which it was reported back to automakers and NHTSA, and automaker end up to do the actual recall uh, later uh, 2004. When was it reported to NHTSA? I believe it's uh, during 2004. Uh, uh, reported needs a back. It's, uh, I believe it's from automakers because they have to do the recall. And uh, uh, I believe November 2004. Well, if you could confirm that in writing before the end of the week, we'd certainly appreciate it. Uh, yes, uh, we can get back to uh, the subcommittee uh, by the end of uh, by the end of this uh, by the end of this. Yes, yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now the ranking member has one additional question as well. Um, Mr. Mr. Shostak, there another news report um, from November in the New York Times reported that after, 2000, uh, after a 2004 airbag rupture in a Honda vehicle, your company reached a non-public settlement agreement with the yeah. injured uh, party and uh, also reported that you reached non-public settlement agreements after three airbag ruptures in 2007. So I, I'm just wondering how many settlements like that there are and if um, you are, uh, feel yourself required, or the company feels itself required to inform NHTSA or the public about these um, non-public settlements. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman, for the question. Uh, there, there certainly are uh, uh, settlements in, uh, in lawsuits. That's, uh, that, that's uh, not unusual in our legal system. But what, in, with regard to these airbag inflators, we have made NHTSA aware of every inflator rupture that has occurred uh, in a Honda vehicle. So we, we do not uh, intend to, uh, you know, the confidentiality of legal settlements is part of our system here, but that's not to us. Uh, a reason to, to, uh, uh, that, that's going to cover up any safety information. We are providing the safety information regarding inflators to NHTSA. So in all of these particular cases, you did also give NHTSA the information? We, we provided NHTSA with information about all inflator ruptures. Yes, Congresswoman. Okay, and in a timely way, 2004, 2007? So the... Let me just be clear, because there's two, two ways. If, uh, we have been sharing with NHTSA all information about inflators. We have fallen short on our tread obligations, as I mentioned before. <laughs> there were eight of them, eight out of the 1,700 related to uh, Takata airbag inflate, eight out of the 1,700 related to Takata airbag inflator ruptures. D did we report those on our tread report? The answer to that is no, Congresswoman. But NHTSA had that information on the basis of our other communications with them. So it did not, in our view, hinder uh, the process of continuing to investigate, as we have been since 2007, these Takata airbag inflator ruptures. So the, these legal settlements have nothing to do, you're saying, with the actual reporting of the problem for which the um, lawsuit arose. Congresswoman, what I'm saying is that we have shared information about Takata inflator ruptures with NHTSA. Okay. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you. And that does conclude the questions uh, for our first panel. As uh, discussed throughout, there was mentions of written questions, QFRs. Uh, we uh, so want to let the panel know that it is likely you will have questions, written questions submitted to you. Uh, we will do our best to uh, get those to you in a timely manner, which always means a couple of weeks. And if you could uh, likewise then answer them within a couple of weeks, we would greatly appreciate them and get them back to us. Uh, so this panel, uh, thank you for your contribution and helping us better understand Obviously, this committee is dedicated to making sure 
uh, that the people that are driving vehicles are as safe as they can possibly be. Uh, I think you share that as well. So I uh, appreciate your time here today. You are dismissed. Thank you. We'll give it uh, one or two minutes before we'll recognize you. Okay, Ms. Freeman. Staff all set up? Everything good to go over there? All right, I think it looks like we're set. Uh, Acting Administrator, Mr. Freeman, I, Friedman, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the last few hours, uh, a couple hours of their testimony. And uh, now you are recognized for your five minutes. And welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Microphone on. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, and members of the subcommittee. Thank you for inviting me to testify about the serious issues of safety defects in Takata airbags. <coughs> Over 10 million vehicles across 10 automakers have been recalled because of inflators that can rupture when airbags deploy. More than half of these are part of older recalls associated with known manufacturing problems <coughs> and four related deaths that have occurred in the United States. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I apologize. <coughs> Thank you. Many of these vehicles have already been repaired, but many have not. <coughs> that is why NHTSA alerted consumers this year to bring their vehicles in for repairs. Recalls are serious safety issues and vehicle recall completion rates remain far too low. I encourage all owners to go to safercar.gov slash vinlookup to find out if their vehicle needs to be repaired under these or any existing recalls. In addition to NHTSA's efforts to help consumers, industry must step up. Automakers must do a better job to aggressively reach out to consumers to get their vehicles repaired, and they must report all information required under the TRED Act. 
dealers have to check VIN numbers for open recalls every time a vehicle is brought in for service. And as the administration proposes in the Grow America Act, rental car companies and used car dealers should never be allowed to rent or sell vehicles without fixing them first. Congress can also provide help to states to implement programs directly linking vehicle registration to the repair of open recalls. Now I want to address the latest airbag recalls. NHTSA moved to open an investigation based on three consumer complaints about airbags from three different manufacturers. We connected the dots. Takata was the common supplier, and all were from Florida and Puerto Rico. We reached out to Takata and the manufacturers, discovered three additional ruptures, and that airbags with these or similar inflators are used by several more manufacturers. Initial data suggested that the defects in the driver and passenger airbags were related to prolonged exposure to high heat and humidity. And so NHTSA acted quickly. And within days of opening an investigation, obtained recalls in areas of demonstrated risk from manufacturers with the same or similar inflators. Automakers responded to our call and declared defects based on a handful of incidents and thankfully no reported deaths. Our policy is clear. Vehicle recalls are nationwide and, have, and we have denied and will continue to deny requests for regional recalls unless the manufacturer provides solid information indicating that the risk is regionally limited. The data we had at the time on the regional nature of the problem was compelling and we wanted the manufacturers to quickly recall the vehicles of those at demonstrated risk. But that was far from the end of our efforts. We are actively looking into other claims of injury or death to determine if they could be related. And while we continue those efforts, we refuse to wait until someone else got hurt. We had Takata begin testing airbags from vehicles across the country. The tests so far have provided data supportive of the regional recall approach for passenger side airbags, as you can see in this chart. But when we quickly connected a more recent driver side injury in North Carolina, to one in California, as you can see in this chart, and um, others that did happen in Florida, we acted. And I called on Takata and the vehicle manufacturers with driver's side airbags with the same or similar inflators to expand the driver's side recall nationwide. Mr. Chairman, it's time again for industry to step up and put safety first. But we learned last night that Takata has refused to issue a nationwide notice of a defect in these driver's side airbags. Until they and automakers act, affected drivers won't be protected. We are now engaged in a detailed review of Takata's response to our demand and special order and will follow up with all appropriate steps to ensure Takata and automakers protect the driving public nationwide. Takata must also increase their testing to provide us with more data to determine the extent and full nature of the defects. I was encouraged by Toyota, Honda, and Ford's agreement to engage in coordinated independent testing in response to our general order and expect all automakers to step up. In addition, Takata and the manufacturers must quickly ramp up production of replacement parts and make these remedies available to vehicle owners, including by working with other airbag suppliers. Finally, if our continued investigation or added testing show that the passenger side airbag defects are not limited to regions of high heat and humidity, we will act quickly. Until then, we want to ensure that the limited supply of passenger side replacement parts are made available to those at demonstrated risk. Mr. Chairman, each day more than 90 Americans lose their lives due to drunk driving, not wearing a seatbelt, and the many other causes of traffic fatalities. Each hour, more than 200 Americans are injured in traffic crashes. As we work each day at NHTSA, these are tragic reminders of the importance of our efforts and how we must build on our many successes and continue to work hard and even harder to protect the American public. The case of defective Takata airbags is no different. And so let me be clear to you, we will continue our aggressive efforts to protect Americans from defective Takata airbags. We have acted swiftly and based on the evidence, and we will continue to do so. And if we find any evidence of wrongdoing, those responsible will be held accountable. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, now I'll recognize myself for five minutes to start the questions. 
Uh, so bluntly, does NHTSA believe that humidity is the problem? It is clear that humidity is one of the factors and clearly is, is a major factor when it comes to passenger side airbags. When it comes to driver side airbags, we have to follow the evidence. And the evidence is clear that the problem is not limited to areas of very high absolute humidity. All right. So uh, Takata believes that a national recall of driver side airbags is unnecessary. Can you explain with some level of specificity, uh, speci specifics, why NHTSA now disagrees, especially in light of the fact that NHTSA had initially called for a regional action? Mr. Chairman, um, first of all, I was deeply disappointed by Takata's response and Takata's failure to take responsibility for the defects that their products it, for the defects in their products. Um, the fundamental explanation is we have followed the data. Um, initially, all of the incidents that occurred in the real world with both passenger and driver side airbags all occurred exclusively in Florida and Puerto Rico. Um, when we expanded the testing and pushed Takata to do the testing, the same held true for the testing of all passenger airbags as you can see in this chart over here. However, when we saw real-world incidents on the driver's side, one in California, we pushed Honda to make sure that their recall covered that region. Then, very recently, we, we became aware of a driver's side incident in North Carolina. With six total incidents, two of which are outside that region, mm -hmm. we can no longer support a, na a, a regional recall. Our policy is clear. Recalls must be nationwide unless the manufacturers can demonstrate that they are regional. With the new data, it is clear they can no longer demonstrate that the region that was used before was appropriate for driver side airbags. The, uh, specifically, the cars uh, that you referenced, uh, North Carolina and the California, Santa Monica area, uh, what is the level of absolute humidity there, and is it so different uh, that you can say, uh, backing up, what you're saying is that it needs to go to a more national level. If we could put up chart D over here. What chart D is, is uh, data from NOAA indicating the uh, median annual dew point temperature. And dew point temperature is basically a measure of the total amount of water in the air or the absolute humidity. As you can see, the brown areas are where we saw initially all the incidents. Then we started to see some passenger incidents in the red areas. The new incidents in California and in um, uh, North, North, Carolina. North Carolina, pardon me, are roughly around the edge of the yellow and green areas, clearly indicating that they are outside of the areas of the regional recalls and in areas of lower humidity. Well, in, in the sense, uh, this is why this issue is particularly difficult to get my mind around. So if the issue is uh, the absolute humidity, how, how, what caused the defect in California and North Carolina autos? Mr. Chairman, you're asking the exact same questions we're asking. One of the most frustrating parts about this is that neither the automakers nor Takata have been able to get to the bottom of the root cause on this. We've been pushing them to do so. We are also working and hope to, within a week, hire outside expertise and begin standing up our own testing capabilities so that we can supplement the work that they are doing. But they are responsible legally for getting to the bottom of this, and we have pushed them to do so, including requiring answers to questions under oath to force them to do so. But between the fact that the uh, root cause on the driver's side is not clear, now that it's clear that it's outside those areas of high temperature and high humidity, and the fact that we now have six total incidents, it is clear to us that a regional recall is no longer appropriate for the driver's side airbags. Very good. I appreciate that. So in regard to the, the humidity aspect, uh, the three automakers testify that they believe it is humid uh, or humidity is, is the root cause. Uh, I don't have the level of confidence in that, but they've said they're going to hire a third party uh, independent inspection of, of whether it is. 
related to the humidity or something else. Uh, so my question, very quickly answer, do you believe that as well, uh, that a third party uh, independent inspector is absolutely necessary? I believe we need to put all resources forward to address this issue. But also let me be clear, a root cause is not required for a recall. All that is required for a recall is an unreasonable risk to safety. And that is clear on the driver's side that there is an unreasonable risk to safety outside of the areas of the highest humidity and temperature. I agree with that latter part, but uh, the reality is for the consumer is if the root cause isn't identified, how can you have confidence that they've solved the problem by putting in a new airbag? And we share your concern and we will evaluate the adequacy of their remedy to make sure that the American public is safe. Thank you. Thank you. Recognize the uh, ranking member, Jan Schakowsky. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On November 26, NHTSA issued a recall request letter to Takata acknowledging that, as you've just said, that there's a safety-related defect regarding the driver's side airbags. I wanted to know why did this request go to Takata alone, um, either instead of or in addition to uh, the manufacturers? Um, why hasn't NHTSA issued recall request letters to the automakers? demanding that they expand the recalls of the driver's side airbags. Ranking member, uh, on November 17th, I called on Takata and then followed up the next day and called on all the involved manufacturers to recall these vehicles. So I made a verbal demand to them. The reason why we put uh, a written demand to Takata is because once Takata does the right thing and agrees to this, it doesn't matter what the automakers do. There is a clear statement of a defect and all the automakers must recall those vehicles. So what we, were, what we are looking to do is to get these vehicles recalled as quickly as no, possible. No, I understand that, but Takata party. has said no to you. Absolutely. And so um, it would seem to me, um, since that was their option, that it would make sense to go to the automakers as well. And in our next, so we are evaluating uh, Takata's response in our, in our next steps. We will work to push Takata and the automakers to recall these vehicles nationwide. I, I, I noted the action by Honda today. Correct. Which is a clear and promising action, but clearly also not enough. Much more needs to be done, and we will push and use all the extent of our authority to push Takata and the manufacturers to address. Well, what is your authority now that Takata has said? Well, our, our authority under, under the Safety Act is our next step would be to issue an initial decision of a defect and then we would hold a public hearing, giving Takata the opportunity to provide any evidence they have. So far, they have not provided any compelling evidence. Um, we would give the same opportunity to the automakers. After that hearing, we would weigh all the evidence and make a final determination. And how long would that take? Um, I, I cannot tell you yet because we just got the material. Frame of reference. Order of magnitude. How long? Order of magnitude before a hearing could be certainly multiple weeks and likely multiple months. Okay. Let me also ask you a question about your climate map. You, the, the darkest part, well, there's Florida, but then there's also Texas. And yet on the original regional recall, you didn't include um, any part of Texas. Why is that? So the original, all of the original incidents occurred in Florida or Puerto Rico. And so Florida and Puerto Rico were included um, in those regions. There's, you know, this chart doesn't show all the gradation in humidity levels. That said, we have pushed all of the automakers involved to cover the same region, at least the same region, not just in Florida and Puerto Rico, but all around the Gulf Coast to ensure not just that the darkest color um, is included, but that there is a significant buffer zone outside of the darkest area and the red no, area. I understand. It's just curious to me if you think that at least humidity is a key factor, that why you, the first choices wouldn't be those areas of highest humidity in your initial recall. Well, it was because all of the data pointed to incidents in um, initially kind of the more southern parts of uh, Florida and Puerto Rico. So we went with the initial data, but as we got more data, we acted quickly to make sure that the recalls were expanded. That was one of the benefits 
of the testing that we pushed Takata to do is that we started seeing failures outside of that area, and that made clear to us that the evidence was pointing to the need for a broader recall. Every time the evidence has pointed to the need for a broader recall, we have pushed industry to act on that evidence. Okay, I want to I want to go to uh, another topic. You know that um, uh, our ranking member of the full committee, Waxman, and and, and I had uh, introduced new auto safety legislation this year, um, which, among other things, would improve the early warning reporting system by requiring manufacturers to provide more information, making more information public. Could you, bri oops, let's see, maybe I'll, I'll just put this in writing. If you could briefly describe how the early warning reporting system currently works. If you could provide us that information, that would be great. We will do so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The chair now recognizes full committee chair, Mr. Upton, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, welcome back, Mr. Freedom, uh, Friedman. Um, so you've seen these reports, uh, the one that I cited earlier in USA Today. I think you actually might have written a response to that in, in terms of the editorial, as I recall, a, a number of weeks ago. So as you try to connect the dots, w since these stories have emerged, what have you done as it relates to going back to Dakota and seeing whether or not did they really do these? I mean, were they really off hours and weekends and what do they do with the evidence and how does that comply? I mean, I don't know if you've thought there's enough evidence. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, uh, enough evidence to go back to the TREDAC and, and, and see if, the, A, if, if they were true, if there's actually someone is liable for, for criminal sanctions. I mean, what 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 has your been, what is your response behind the scenes to what has been reported publicly. Mr. Chairman, we took two steps. First of all, we looked into all of our information. But second of all, we issued special order to Takata compelling them under oath to provide us with all information on any testing that they have done related to the And have they done that? Have they done have they reported back yet? Um, they have uh, they provided their submission as of December 1st, and my team is now so pouring Monday. through the voluminous data to, <laughs> to get to the bottom of this. I share your concerns. When we saw those reports, we acted quickly to make sure that we could get to the bottom of this. So you don't have a, so you haven't been able to get so since they only reported back Monday, you don't you don't have you don't have. Uh, are we will you be able to share with us uh, your you know, the, we, we what will, they submitted? We will dig in uh, to all that information and we'll be more than happy to, to brief you and, and the committee on what we find. What has been your response to the, you know, the, the reports and the underreporting, 1,700 some cases uh, by, by Honda uh, as relates to what you, how you all are supposed to function? Um, my personal response was, was shock and frustration that um, Honda has failed so significantly to follow the TREAD Act. Um, Again, we issued a uh, special order to Honda to get to the bottom of this and to push them to discover not only about these 1,700 failures, but what other failures are associated with their reporting of early warning um, data and information. Um, we, our, our team has gotten back that information also just recently. We're digging through that information and to determine, they've already basically admitted their guilt. Now the question that we're trying to determine is how many different ways do they fail and um, how, uh, how many different ways might we have to consider um, finding them to the full extent of the law. And have you communicated with the other auto companies, all of them, in terms of what, you, what Honda uh, did and, and to make sure that, in fact, the other companies have not followed that same type of pattern? So we, we have two, two steps along uh, those lines. One, in, in my expectation is you would have asked me that exact same question. And so today, I'm calling on each and every automaker to do an audit of their early warning reporting and provide that information to us to ensure that they are fully following the TRED Act and can demonstrate that to us. We are looking at other measures, potentially um, compelling them to provide such information. But I think every automaker should take the responsible step right now of doing their own audit to determine and ensure that they are appropriately following the TREAD Act, and if they are not, report that information to us and fix the problem immediately. Now, you indicated in your testimony that uh, you've been responsible for Takata quadrupling their testing. 
Do you de have you determined that by quadrupling that that rate, would that be sufficient to generate the needed data to understand the current problems? No. In fact, I was very encouraged to hear. Well, first of all, we continue to push Takata to do more. Second, I was very encouraged to hear um, Toyota, Ford, um, and Honda agree to do additional testing. Further, we issued a general order to each and every automaker involved to require them to provide us with all the information they have on testing. We are trying to push the entire industry to ramp up their testing. We are also working to stand up some test facilities of our own so that we can verify the work that they're doing. Appreciate it. I yield back. Chair recognized full committee ranking member, Mr. Waxman. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, on November 18, NHTSA announced that it was calling on Takata and automakers to expand the current regional recall of defective driver's side airbags to a national recall. NHTSA based its decision to expand the recall on airbag failures that occurred outside of the high humidity areas covered by the regional recall. Mr. Friedman, have you determined that humidity is no longer a key factor or contributing factor to ruptures in these airbags? And have you determined that consumers outside of high humidity regions are potentially in danger from ruptures? Regarding passenger side airbags, all the data continues to point to an issue associated with high temperatures and high humidity over long periods of time. On the driver's side airbag, while humidity may still be a contributing factor, it is now clear, based on the evidence, that that is not simply the dominant factor, which is why we have called on them and made clear to them that while we accept regional recalls where the evidence supports it, the evidence does no, no longer supports a recall limited to those previous areas. Mm -hmm. In September, uh, Ranking Member Schakowsky introduced a bill that requires that all recalls occur on a national basis. Mr. Friedman, cars are mobile and often move from state to state. Can you commit to reevaluate the procedure that allows for regional recalls based on climate or environmental conditions? Ranking Member, each and every day we are looking at how we can do more and do better for the American public. Um, this issue has certainly caused us to continue to look into this issue. Mm -hmm. Mr. Friedman, the committee has received Takata's testing results from over 2,500 airbags that were collected as part of the uh, regional recalls or safety improvement campaigns. These res results are a bit perplexing. They show no ruptures from the driver's side airbags, but they show more than 60 ruptures of passenger side airbags. In the case of one auto manufacturer with one type of airbag, one of, the, one of every eight airbags from southern Florida vehicles ruptured during tests. Can you help us understand why NHTSA has asked for a national recall on the driver's side airbags but has not done so with the passenger side airbags, even though Takata test results seem to show higher risk for those airbags? Um, so if you look at uh, chart A, the red dots are multiple cases during the testing of where there have been failures in passenger side airbags. Each and every one of the failures in the real world and in testing have all happened in areas of high temperature, high humidity, consistent exposure to those areas. In this case, we must follow the data, and the data on the passenger side clearly at indicates that the problem is in those areas. That said, our investigation is far from over. We are pushing for additional testing. And if we receive any evidence indicating that the problem is broader, we will act and we will act quickly to protect the American public. Is um, the issue with the driver's side airbags a different issue than with the passenger side airbags? What's the difference that makes you confident in calling for a national recall only on the driver's side airbag? We, we are following the, d the data, and that's the basis for our decision. Um, we do know that there are design differences between passenger side and driver side airbags. But let me be clear, as Takata and the automakers indicated, they have not yet gotten to the bottom of the root cause of this issue. That is a critical step that we are pushing for and we are involved in because getting to the root cause will help dramatically clarify things for consumers, 
for automakers, for suppliers, and for the actions that each and every one must take. That is a critical step, and we will continue to push ourselves and industry to get to the bottom of this. That's one of the reasons why we are now um, looking to get under contract, hopefully within about a week, an expert in propellants and airbag uh, production and design so that we can have added expertise on top of the experts we already have to get to the bottom of this as quickly as possible. We will leave no stone unturned in our efforts. Honda failed to report 1,729 serious accidents resulting in injuries or deaths to NHTSA between 2003 and 2014. Eight of these incidents involved Takata airbags. Can you explain how this information could have been used by NHTSA if Honda had reported it like it was supposed to? And can NHTSA penalize Honda for this failure to report? And in your view, would increasing the penalties help ensure that manufacturers report the information they're supposed to do? Um, Ranking Member, um, the way we would use and the way we use all of the early warning uh, information is to spot trends, to spot cases where there are potential defects. Any time an automaker fails to provide that information to us, it leaves us more hamstrung in our ability to find these problems quicker uh, and to get these problems fixed sooner. Um, we are, one of the things that we are determining right now, based, based both on Honda's admission of their failure and on the information they have provided, is to what degree penalties are appropriate, but I can assure you we will hold them um, accountable to the full extent of the law. That said, as you indicate, our maximum penalty for any single incident is only $35 million. Sadly, for too many car companies, that's pocket change. Mm -hmm. That needs to change. And under the Grow America Act, the President and the Secretary have called for the maximum penalty to be increased to at least $300 million so that it will send a much clearer message. We have worked over the last six years and have fined automakers more than $160 million using our authority, more than any administration ever has before. But it is clear to us that we need a bigger stick. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Waxman, now recognize the Vice Chairman, Mr. Lance, for five minutes. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm interested in the time frame moving forward. Um, in answer to uh, Congresswoman Skowski's uh, question, you, you said it might be weeks or months. Uh, I'd like a little more specifics on that. Your November 26th letter, uh, well, there was a response on December 2nd, a response with which you fundamentally disagree, and I would imagine I disagree as well. What is your next step, Mr. Friedman? Thank you, Vice Chairman. Um, our next step, in fact, my team already began once we received that, the information um, from Takata, both on Monday yep. in response to our special order and yesterday in response to our recall demand. We are digging into that data. We are evaluating their arguments. We are marshalling our evidence. Is, our there, is there argument in the three-page uh, response that they gave you? Because that, that is the extent of their argument, and it is. Rather weak, weak tea, in my judgment, legally. Um, so, so what's the time frame? Because the American people need to be assured that their automobiles are safe. And, and what is your next step, and when will that occur? Our next step after evaluating all that information would be to issue an initial determination, uh, initial decision of a defect to Takata and the automakers. Um, after that, we would hold a public hearing. And, um, and how soon can you uh, initiate that? As soon as humanly possible. Uh, Vice Chairman, the key, because we want to protect the American public, we need to make sure that we build the strongest case possible because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if Takata and the automakers continue to refuse to act, we are going to have to take them to court. Mm -hmm. and we want to make sure that we have a case prepared that will win in that circumstance. Yeah, you, you, you can build a court case over time. So can you estimate for the committee and through the committee to the American people uh, when your next step will be taken? We have already begun our next step of diving into the data. Uh, that, that doesn't answer my question, Mr. Friedman. When, when, the next legal step, not just diving into the data. When, when will you next do something officially regarding Takata and the automakers? Um, Vice Chairman, I apologize, but at this point, because there's voluminous data from Takata, I can't give you an exact estimate. My team is working furiously and as quickly as possible, and as I indicated earlier, um, it could be weeks. It could be months, but it certainly won't be many months if it is. I could see something happening. And then if that were to occur, let's say it occurs by the 1st of February, and I would hope sooner than that, and then what happens? 
Um, we will uh, hold the hearing if they refuse. And the hearing has to be held within what time frame? Um, uh, the Safety Act does not, uh, does not establish the specifics. So it's not uh, 45 frame. days or 30 days? or Right. The Safety Act does not establish that. We will move to have that. So that would, from our perspective, I think it should be time of the essence. I agree. And then what happens after that? And then after that, we will, uh, if the evidence still points to uh, the need for a broader recall, we will issue a final determination um, that will compel Takata and the automakers to act. If they fail to act, then we will have to work with the Justice Department to bring them to court and force that action. And it's the Justice Department that brings uh, uh, Takata, potentially, and the uh, uh, manufacturers to court. I would have to get back to you on the exact process, but my understanding is, yes, that we would work with the Justice Department. And this is a civil action? I believe that is the case, yes. And then uh, do you refer situations for criminal prosecution? Uh, under certain circumstances, the law does allow us to do that. And, for example, Honda's significant underreporting under the Tread Act, is that then referred to a DOJ for civil action or for criminal action or for both? Well, we have, we have the authority um, and we expect Honda, frankly, to come in and agree to a significant penalty associated with that. So That would be a civil penalty. Yes, that we won't have to move to the Justice Department on that specific matter. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you. The chair recognized the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Harper, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Friedman, what is a reasonable period of time to notify someone? Um, automakers are required by law to notify NHTSA within five days of either determining a defect or five days of when they should have known that there was a defect, then under regulation they have no more than 60 days to get a letter like this into the hands of consumers notifying them that this is an important safety recall and that they must take action. That said, even that 60 days to me is, is longer than I would like to see, which is why we have a VIN lookup tool that every American can go to at safercar.gov slash VIN lookup and even before you receive these recall notices, you will be alerted of whether or not there's an open recall for your vehicle. You can also sign up for added alerts sure. um, from our app. Because it's important for the public, the driving public, uh, and, and passengers in those vehicles to know when there's a, a safety issue, correct? It, it's critically important. Yeah. Any recall is an unreasonable risk to safety. Yeah. Automakers must act quickly to inform consumers, and consumers should act quickly to get their vehicles repaired. Okay. Well, explain to me why, how it is that NHTSA knew that Honda had underreported back in 2012, yet delayed on doing anything about that. Well, in, in 2012, um, we became aware of a limited number of unreporting and understand a limited 1700 right at, at the time we were only is that aware a of limited number why was it the why wasn't something if we're talking about timeliness being important NHTSA didn't meet your own standard at the time we were only aware of eight it was only recently that we became aware of the 1700 problems based on those eight um, we pushed Honda to follow standard process, which is to update their records. Once we found out that the problem was bigger, we went after Honda. We forced them under oath to provide us extensive information, and we will hold them accountable for their failings. But nothing was really done on those eight uh, at that point, and, and those eight were important to the eight incidents that were involved, obviously, were they not? They were important, and we made sure once we discovered this, that Honda reported that information to us so that we could act on it. At the end of the day, the safety of the American public is always our top priority, and making sure we had that information was critical to well, us. Well, it sounds good, but it doesn't seem that that was exactly the case back in 2012. But I'll move on and ask you, Mr. Friedman, at the November 20th Senate Commerce Committee hearing, you said NHTSA acknowledged a plan authorizing dealers to disable potentially defective passenger side airbags where replacement parts were unavailable, as long as they also tell consumers not to put someone in that passenger seat. Is NHTSA's acknowledgement of this approach an endorsement, and should it be an opinion for all manufacturers of vehicles with passenger side airbags subject to recall? Congressman, if the first and foremost priority should be getting those passenger airbags fixed. I understand, if, but if, is this an acknowledgement that this is the appropriate plan until you can get uh, a, a replacement? 
if the parts aren't available and if the vehicle doesn't have an occupant sensor that would disable those airbags, then yes, it's, it's clearly an appropriate step to take in the interest of safety. Can I ask this? As, as the nation's top highway safety traffic official, uh, can you tell this subcommittee that you will put into writing the legal and policy basis supporting the disabling of recalled airbags until replacement parts are available? Or is that already in writing? Well, this is, so it, it has been part of our standard process. One, if a part is broken, then an automaker uh, can disable it without facing any legal penalties, and we've made that clear to the automakers involved. So is that a written formal policy of NHTSA? Uh, no. Will it become one? We will, we will investigate that. Okay. Let me, let me ask you. You heard, you were in here for the testimony on the first panel, correct? Yes. Did you hear uh, when, uh, when Mr. Uh, Shimizu at Takata discuss manufacturing versus design, and he classified this as a manufacturing issue. Uh, do you believe it's a manufacturing uh, problem or design problem, or do you just not know at this point? Well, I would argue his testimony was inconsistent because he sure. was clear that the industry is not clear yet on the root cause of the problem, which is why we are pushing to get to the bottom of it. And I know we don't know yet, but do you, do you view the propellant as the prime suspect right now? It, it is clear that the propellant is involved. That said, we know that other manufacturers in the 90s use the same propellant. We're looking to determine whether or not there have been any ruptures associated with those. So far, we have not found it. If, that, if there are no ruptures with those, it's an indication that if you have a good design and good manufacturing, the propellant may, on its own, be safe to use. But clearly, no matter what, if you don't have the appropriate design and you don't have the appropriate manufacturing, you've failed to live up to your responsibility. Even some previous Takata scientists have indicated early that using an ammonium nitrate-based propellant was not a safe or good idea. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? We are asking the exact same questions, which is why we've compelled under oath all information from Takata on all the changes that they have made to the propellant and why we're bringing in outside expertise who, who uh, who has actually had experience with these propellants. Thank you, Mr. Friedman. My time's expired. Now you'll back. Thank you. Does Dr. Burgess wish to ask any questions? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would appreciate the ability to ask questions or witness. You are recognized for five minutes. I thank the chairman for the courtesy of, of the recognition. Um, and uh, um, <clears throat> Administrator Friedman, thank you for, for being here. Obviously, we've had a chance to interact in other subcommittees and in, in other roles, particularly with the cobalt uh, uh, ignition problem earlier this year. Let me ask you a question a bit. Mr. Yarmouth of Kentucky posed a question to Takata, and then he posed it generally to the manufacturers, but his time was running short, so he said he was going to request a, an answer in writing. And his question basically was, how can we be confident that the replacement airbags are safe. So let me pose that question to you. Uh, there's a, a, a recall going on. Various manufacturers are, are providing replacement parts. Um, to the extent, can the public be reassured that these replacement parts are indeed safe? We believe that the replacement parts, for example, on the passenger side are safer than the ones that are in the vehicles. The data, the data points to uh, a median time of over 10 years before the failures have occurred. That said, we are looking into the adequacy of this remedy, and if we determine that it is not adequate and that it doesn't ensure the safety of, of the American public, we will push them to take other steps. This ties in, back, in part back to the root cause question. Getting to the root cause is part of the key of determining the appropriateness and the effectiveness of this remedy. I would just point out there's more than a semantic difference between safe and safer. I, I agree, and I, and I use that term uh, intentionally because we are still looking into the adequacy of this remedy. That said, our job is to protect the American public, and if uh, the American public can be provided with airbags that are safer, I truly believe that is the right step because that can save lives. Well, let me ask you a question because, I mean, you just uh, dealt with the propellant uh, a bit. And that has come up several times this morning. And the, the fact is the propellant did change from the 90s into the last decade. Um, currently, are, are there ongoing studies to look at the type of propellant? And in fact, are there safer 21st century propellants that ought to be considered? 
Um, certainly, the, we are aware of the industry looking at a variety of different propellants. Different manufacturers use different propellants. Takata themselves has evolved um, the formulation of their propellant, and that's one of the reasons why, as we learn more about that, we've compelled them to provide all the information under oath of those changes. We've also been reaching out and been in Can discussions. Can I stop you there for a second? Yes, absolutely. And, and it, it's just, I don't, want to, I don't want to project, but in many ways the answers today provided by Takata seem less than forthcoming, and I don't know whether that's just me that picked up on that, but do you have similar concerns? I, I share your concerns, and that's why, one, we've required them to answer questions under oath, because now it's not just their word that's at stake, it's much more because we can penalize them or ultimately they can be held much more broadly responsible if they lie under oath. Second, we are not simply trusting Takata. We are in conversations with multiple other airbag suppliers and we are bringing in outside expertise on this propellant because we, we agree with you. We cannot simply trust the information that Takata gives us. We need to make sure that we are covering all our bases to get to the bottom of this for the safety of the American public. Well, let me go back to something. I think both Mr. Lance and Mr. Waxman brought this up uh, many, many years ago when this, not this subcommittee, but our, our Committee on Energy and Commerce was doing an investigation into uncommanded accelerations in vehicles in 2009. Ultimately, there was, uh, um, and, and you, uh, in response to Mr. Waxman, you're, you're, the amount that you can find someone is, is capped at $35 million. But in that instance, there was over and above that fine, there was an action by the Department of Justice. Right. At this point, are you contemplating an additional referral to the Department of Justice on anything that you've uncovered in this investigation? We've actually been working and cooperating with the Department of Justice and helping them in their efforts since September. So that is, that is on the table as far as, as a, f a future action would be concerned? The, my understanding is the Department of Justice is, is looking into this matter. I would, I would direct you to them for uh, additional comment. Well, I, I appreciate that. But uh, it, uh, certainly when that occurred in response to the uncommanded acceleration issue, uh, I, while I might agree that your ability to fine is, is limited, certainly that seemed to be a fairly significant legal stick that, uh, that you had at your disposal and another tool that, that might be useful in, in compelling cooperation. Well, fundamentally, um, it was discovered that Toyota lied to us. Despite their lies, we got to the bottom of, of that problem, determined the problem, and got those vehicles recalled. Yes, that said, we, we find them not just once, but multiple times because of their failings. And in that case, we also worked very closely with the Justice Department in efforts that ultimately led to uh, their fine of more than a billion dollars. So we yes, will continue For the record, I, I did not mention a manufacturer. You did. I, I want that to be clear. Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate the time, and I'll yield back. Thank you. Recognize the gentleman from Maryland for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just have a question about your capacity uh, as an agency and um, whether you feel that you have um, the resources you need to, um, to do the job and, um, you know, what your capacity currently is in terms of uh, reinforcing uh, public disclosure and encouraging greater transparency and looking at this particular incident that we're investigating or that we're, we're having testimony on today um, would would enhance capacity uh, additional staff dedicated to the office of defect investigations um, to the early warning reporting um, and so forth would that have assisted your agency in this instance and then more broadly if you could speak to to your capacity that would be helpful I mean the simple and straightforward answer is yes um, I mean we are a small agency that I would argue punches well above our weight uh, over the last uh, decade our efforts have led to the recall of nearly one million vehicles but it is also clear when you have a fleet of over 260 million vehicles um, and multiple manufacturers multiple potential safety issues that we need more resources to ensure that we can do everything we can to keep the American public safe. Um, the President's budget has continued uh, to request additional resources both for our Office of Defects Investigation but also for the rest of our agency. Um, 
Congressman, 33,561 people died in 2012. 33,561 tragic lives lost because of issues such as drunk driving, people not wearing the seatbelts, vehicles that could have had more technology on board to keep them safer. There is no doubt in my mind that with more resources, we can do more to address the epidemic that faces Americans in terms of fatalities and injuries every year on our roads. I would imagine that, that those resources would help you both kind of chase information on the front end that would get you to a place of, of you know, pushing for, for solutions, as well as not having to maybe triage or prioritize in ways once you've got the information in because you have the capacity to address a number of these things simultaneously. So I appreciate your, uh, uh, your providing that testimony. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. Uh, having no other members requesting time, uh, that then concludes uh, your testimony and questions. And this committee, as you know, uh, we can submit written questions to you. I would expect that. We will try to be timely and request that uh, your office be timely in their providing us the responses to those questions. Uh, thank you. You were very informative. Uh, we like charts. Uh, <laughs> so uh, nice job with the visual aids. Uh, now, um, have any other closing? Uh, a quick note before we adjourn here is that uh, this con uh, subcommittee and full committee uh, bipartisanly have concerns about the role NHTSA plays in continuing uh, these continuing large-scale recalls and uh, I hope that NHTSA will fully cooperate with the GAO as GAO carries out the bipartisan request to look at NHTSA's internal proce procedures and processes. Mr. Chairman, we will definitely cooperate, and I look forward to working with the committee on ways that NHTSA can get additional resources, additional people, additional computer tools, so that we can do the very best job for the American public. Very good. Mr. Chairman, could you yes, me for Yes, gentleman from Maryland. Um, just wanted to take the occasion to thank the chairman for his uh, service on this committee and in, in, um, in this house. Um, we appreciated his leadership and wish him, wish him well. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so th we are adjourned. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.